All righty then. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night here from Tokyo, Japan, the uh, northern uh, Europe. I guess I'll, I'll leave it at that. And uh, the west coast of the United States. We got we got uh, more moon gangers every day of the uh, week. And um, yeah, with the uh, the crypto mindset course, um, we have over forty people uh, in the Ooh. course uh, at the current moment in time. Um, still uh, working on putting everybody uh, in the uh, the chat room for all of that. So um, as we keep getting people in, I'll keep putting you guys in the chat. Keep getting a bunch of emails, so I'm staying up late. Um, you know, late nights burning that midnight oil, making sure that I get you guys in, get your questions answered. Um, you know, all these things. So. Uh, lots of work for us to do here until we go live on Friday with the webinars. Um, but yes, for everybody who is uh, maybe uh, of the uninitiated or uh, yet unaware, or maybe who has uh, just pays attention to the Moon Gang uh, show on my channel itself, um, we are doing a course called Crypto Mindset. Um, not your average course, I would say. Um, we're going to go uh, pretty deep, but all into crypto in terms of fundamental and technical analysis. Um, but we're also going to go um you know uh keep it you know in layman's terms for some people who are new to crypto i would say probably we have maybe 25 percent of people who are somewhat new to crypto we have 50 percent of people who are uh maybe intermediate and then 25 percent of people who've been in crypto cr for quite a while and maybe uh are mainly focused on the fundamental side or on the technical side but want to um shore up some of their weaknesses on one of those sides or the other so it's kind of the yin and the yang of the crypto world right the bitcoin and ethereum um, whatever you, you know, analogy you guys want to make. Um, but that's coming out or it's already out. It's, uh, finishing on Tuesday at midnight. After that, everybody who's in, uh, for Q4, we'll maximum, we'll do our best, um, to help you guys maximize your gains, uh, bring up your crypto game. Uh, and, um, the thing I mentioned on yesterday's show, which I have not mentioned, uh, many times, uh, before is whoever gets in on this first quarter, uh, which is Q4 of 2024, this course. Um, you guys uh, will, of course, uh, well, not of course, you guys will get uh, Q1 uh, of 2020 uh, for the webinars uh, absolutely for free. And I may not continue this practice for further quarters. So this might just be for this one quarter because every quarter in crypto, the strategy changes absolutely. And we need to make sure that we give you guys individual um, strategies because not everybody's strategy is going to be the same. Um, we might have like little groups or archetypes of different strategies that you know fit with each other um, but we're going to do our best to um tailor the need uh, tailor to you guys' needs um and we are taking this uh, responsibility massively seriously because i know you guys' money is on the line um so we're going to do our best for you guys to uh first not lose money then b make some money then c make as much money as you can in q4 and beyond so um, that's what we do here we're going to make you guys as independent as possible um, as well, not relying on us for all your information, but you're going to have to do a little bit of critical thinking. So if you're not if you're not open to some critical thinking and um, you know doing your own research, then it may not be the course for you. Um, but that will be finishing on uh, Tuesday at uh, midnight uh, yeah. United States time. So there's the link in there. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, who are already into the course, and for those of you guys who uh, you know may have some questions, feel free to email me at Charlie at Cultivate Crypto. Dot com and some of you guys may not have gotten all the emails um, because uh, I told you guys to put my email on your whitelist. I may be ending up in some spam boxes. I have received some emails which, for some reason, um, have ended up in my spam box. So I'm checking both of my folders every day here to make sure nothing gets lost and that we service all of you guys properly. Um, so if I'm behind or if I have not replied to your email, I will find it and I will uh, make sure that we get you guys in there squared up and ready to roll. So that's that um we're uh you know going to be you know we'll mention the course from time to time but today we're going to have a really good conversation in my opinion we got um uh well i'll just first mention the topic and then i'll and then i'll mention who we got on stream here because you guys may not uh know him but um basically we're going to talk about is the DeFi bull run over um some people saying this is a bubble and it has popped and it is going to die but then some people saying we're just at the beginning of this trend and then we're going to talk about like maybe uh, some ideas. Obviously, we do not have a crystal ball of uh, what potentially uh, DeFi could look like next year and uh, into the future. So we have uh, somebody with us who is um, very close to the DeFi. Uh, you could argue CeFi space or CDeFi as CZ would say. Um, uh, our friend Hodlon, uh, or sorry, no, Hodl uh, is, is he saying here, but um, he's on Twitter as uh, 
crypto flippin so i will give you guys uh his handle so that you can go follow him on twitter if you so choose and um yeah man welcome to the stream it's good to have you here thanks charlie crazy week it's 3 a.m here and it's i haven't been sleeping all week because of the because of the celsius pump anyway so yeah, yeah. what's new what's new what's new yeah crypto yeah. never sleeps i'm not Absolutely. gonna lie I've Go on, I, sorry. Yeah, I've, I've been, yeah. I was just gonna say, I'm not gonna lie. I've, I've definitely been like checking my checking the sell price, oh, like when price. I wake up at like two o'clock in the morning. I got, <laughs> I just go on Uniswap. I'm like, huh, I wonder what the rates are right now between sell to ETH. Yeah. <laughs> and every, our friend Black Magic says, "Y'all better talk about sell token going up." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> every freaking day, just going on your app and being up like 10k is crazy dude just being up five figures every time it goes dude crypto man this is the beauty of crypto once you know <laughs> it, it's kind of like that monopoly money you kind of feel like especially if you're like maybe new to crypto and you haven't actually taken some funds out and re re brought it into fiat and maybe used it um right. some people are like wow man like my gains are like going like crazy but uh you know uh is this like illegal is it real money like you know <laughs> People yeah. kind of feel like that, I think, um, when this happens. Um, one of our guys in uh, the uh, Crypto Mindset course, he already asked me, he's like, what do you think about this coin, Fala, P-H-A-L-A? -A? It's a Chinese token available on Huobi only. Um, and he was like, uh, I was like, well, it looks good enough to speculate on. Just don't put more than you're willing to lose. He bought it at one, uh, he bought it at 10 cents. It's at 20 cents plus now within a day. Uh, just <laughs> like, take some profits, bro. Take some profits. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, that early on on a project like super early like I, I've, I've seen people i've seen people catch like 20 x's on a uh a two million dollar market cap coin just yep. just just from hearing from a friend i mean Dude, i mean put 500 I, I, put 500 dollars or a thousand dollars on that that's 10 to 20k if it goes 20x um for absolutely for free like you know, crazy yeah. ass shit i mean the other day me and wasabi we ended up getting a bunch of free Arari token for being nft holders and it was oh, you know yeah, yeah you told me that yeah it, it, so it, 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 yeah so anyone who's ever bought an nft in the in the past i guess year to two years um if you had bought on OpenSea, you probably have accidentally probably bought off a rari so they ended up giving two percent of their total supply to people who have purchased nfts and it was like it was like four four free ethereum for me i've got i got buddies of mine that got ten thousand dollars in free ethereum essentially <laughs> that be great and and there's another there's another airdrop that's happening on the 20th of this month for mm. any NFT, any NFT you've ever purchased. So if you ever like bought an art piece, a, a shirt or something, and it's, it's so, I mean, nice. dude, I'm, I'm expecting thousands of dollars of <laughs> uh, it's like, that, and I've used that to buy some Celsius and some other coins as well. So That's absolutely great. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I, uh, I, I didn't really know what the token was. So to be honest, I just, I dumped mine and got like 10,000 cell token out of it. I was right. like, yes. It was great. And crypt, and I, was, I, was mess, I was messaging. Uh, okay. I was messaging Wasabi like, please tell me you got it because he was chatting to me a couple of weeks ago and he was saying, "I'm going to go home now and buy some cell." I was just like, please tell me you bought that cell. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was so worried for Wasabi, dude. I really was. I was so worried. I was like, my cell bag. I don't play around. There's like, there's like two, three. Like my light. I have a hex bag, a Litecoin bag, and a cell bag. I don't play with those bags at yeah. all. I buy it, so hold it, sit on it. It's all good. So, yeah holding it and earning interest on it and staking it i mean literally i'm doing everything with all these coins i'm just yep I'm chilling mean, on we're, we're not even we're at the very cusp of this bull run man like it's like crazy and um right now bitcoin and ethereum are just sitting there not doing anything and we're you know you're you know we're already seeing this magic internet money just pop into our wallets being like oh you know that's nice <laughs> you know just think about when bitcoin's back at 12k 13k 14k 15k like sky's the limit man it's it's going to be a great q4 I mean, definitely. They've they've almost confirmed that that uh, phase zero will be rolled out this year, this year. Yeah, that'll be. So can you explain good. that a little bit? So, um, so the phase zero contract for for um, Ethereum is basically it's bringing staking onto Ethereum. Oh yeah, yeah. We talked about that on my show on yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Is uh, Ethereum two point oh? You're meaning, right? Yeah, yeah. The, well, the first rollout of it's it's the first yeah. step to, to to get Ethereum two point oh. Yeah, part of the mainnet. Yeah, so Vitalik, um, I forgot the. It must have been a CoinDesk article, but um, yeah, I, I saw it on the Modern Investors YouTube channel where he posted the the link, where he said that a hundred percent of the Vitalik said it's coming out this year, so it is okay. happening this year. Right. So that's going to be that's going to be huge because that locks up 
it, a ton of ETH supply out of circulating supply. And so you, you're having you're having the DeFi phase right now where people are locking up their 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 Ethereum inside of like all these DeFi platforms from you know whatever sushi yams you know uh, uh, you know Wi-Fi token you know every, mm -hmm. everything under the sun right They're, you're locking that Ethereum up and then the main chain of itself is now locking up tokens as well that takes a lot yeah. of supply off of off of the exchanges which the, which then what what does that do you, you yep. know. And so yeah. let's look at this question down here. When moon? So um, it depends on what your definition of moon is. Some people's moon were already at it. To be honest, there's some people. It depends on what your buy-in price was as well. Did you buy Bitcoin at a hundred dollars? Did you buy it at a thousand? Did you buy it at twenty thousand? Right. Um, what is your guys' definition in terms of the overall market of uh, moon uh, uh, territory for Bitcoin and Ethereum? Did you get sure. that? What? Or did I lock did I like out? Did you hear that? I, I, oh, no, that. I, I was I, I uh sorry, I, I didn't I wasn't sure who was who was gonna go first there. But no, I guess I'll, I'll take a fire, I'll take a stab at it. Yeah. No need, no need to be uh uh what do you call it, like uh, kosher here. We can all just yeah. you know, talk yeah. when we want, it's all good. Honest yeah, so kind of my my take, I, I actually don't consider anything in this market moons like at all. Mm. Just like, because like really the prices are, they're not even that much higher than uh, bear market prices. I mean, yeah. the market is just, just starting to show some promise that could lead to a pretty massive like upward trajectory over a couple of years. So uh, the prices are going to go to, to levels that you don't think are possible. Um, <laughs> this happens all the time, like in crypto bull markets. So that's why it's so I guess like even even when Charlie, uh, Litecoin and, and uh, uh, Hodl were talking about the the sell bag, um, even recently, like that's like kind of like a, a good example of that because it's only just gotten started. Um, I mean the volatility is going to be pretty extreme through this entire market cycle, but I mean mm. we we just haven't seen anything yet. Like this is still this is still the beginning. Yeah, it makes me want to sing that song. You know, you ain't seen nothing yet. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah. What how about you guys? It, it, you have a different take. I on think it? I think if we look on the like the the cycle, like you know the the the, the macro cycle trend, we're just on that like first bump. You know, if you mm -hmm. zoom out it back into wherever it was, 2016, 2015, I can't even remember where it started to warm up, but it's just the first bump, isn't it? I think you spot on Wasabi. I think Moon for me is like anything over three dollar sell, three to five dollar sell. That's absolute Moon. Fifty k Bitcoin Moon um ethereum i haven't done enough analysis on Ethereum, but don't think to kind of comment but anything over i don't know three thousand dollars that's the moon um but i think it just feels like the moon right already doesn't it and it's not even it's not even started has it i don't think yeah and there's so right. many people out there they're like i'm too late to this game and you're like bro what, come on <laughs> <Probably. laughs> right yeah we we are still in 2016 just just for, just to give sort of a oh what's up voice so we, hey, we are, yeah, we are still in 2016 right now. That's like in 2016, there was a big ramp up when like Bitcoin was at a low price and it ended up going back up to a thousand dollars. And then the next year is when the thousand dollars turned to 20k. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We're still in that. Well, we still haven't hit our old old time highs yet. So, and the beauty of that, right, is that um, yeah, 2016 to 20, 2017 in the last bull market was you know one and a half two years, but in this market right. with lengthening cycles. Right, could be three to four years uh, max, right. but <clears throat> probably two to three years. But still, um, just that little bit of extra accumulation time for the normies to kind of catch on and be like, "Oh, okay," you know, or people who are starting to pay attention, right, and uh, yeah. denormify themselves, which is good. I've I've got a certain bell. That's that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. It's the it, it's the accumulation time we've all had. We've all had like three years mm -hmm. to like pick this stuff up. So it's already moon in terms of block folio, but in terms of like. Um, the actual moon that's just i don't think we can even comprehend like when that's just going to be utter madness you're going to be getting like a thousand subs a minute on this channel it's just going to be ridiculous Yo, <laughs> I am very angry. If we're too late for this game equals black pill crypto <laughs> just oh, losers okay. who will never never uh you know uh do what they need to do take that they will not take the action they need to take in this game that's for sure i'm garcia i love it i love it do you know how do you know how many people this week of tried to buy sell it's like ridiculous the amount of people that have just piled into my inbox this week i want to oh. buy sell 
I'm give me this like, I've, been give me I've, been, like, I've been telling you for months and months <laughs> and years and years, and now you all want to buy sell token at 55 cents. It's just ridiculous. Back, like, baby. Yeah, I cannot well, believe it. It's crazy. Well, and they're like, you know, depending on where they are, right? If they're in the United States, it's like, okay, I want to buy sell. How do I buy it? Um, okay, if I'm able to, um, you know, if I'm in another country, I'm able to, uh, you know, verify on the sell exchange. How long does it take? Oh, it's going to take like a week or two. Oh crap! Like I'm late to this game. The pump is, price is pumping. Holy shit! Um, you know, oh, I got to go on Uniswap. I don't know what Uniswap is. I don't know what a decentralized exchange is. Like so many people, like running around with their heads cut off, right, trying to get this shit done. Um, I, I mean, it, it is you know uh, new for a lot of people. And this DeFi game, uh, DeFi, CFI, DeFi, C DeFi, however ZZ, CZ calls it, um, it, 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 you know, it's intimidating for a lot of people. But when they see the gains, you know, I think it really gets them to take that action be like, okay, no matter how difficult this may seem to me at the moment, um, it's obviously worth it that I need to learn this stuff and get in. So that's why, you know, we're doing this crypto mindset course um, at the beginning, uh, just before Q4, because, um, you know, like you guys are saying, you know, Q4 is going to be great. So um, uh, I'll, I'll mention what my uh, kind of marks on the moon are just really quickly to answer that other question, which was, yeah, I kind of agree with both of you guys with uh, Wasabi, we're not even close. And, uh, Huddle um, saying like you know like a you know 30k or above 20k is basically uh, like getting towards or no sorry you said 50k is the moon and like <clears throat> I kind of see it in different steps like my first target is uh, 27k and that's like um, you know we're in orbit baby or uh, you know we're on our way and uh, 56k being like uh, like Huddle said being the moon and then um, you know, maybe above sit wherever we are above 56 K. Cause I think that might be an area where we get some hard rejection at first. Um, yeah. but once we get above there decently, that like 70 K then, you know, we're starting to pack our, uh, Mars bags on the moon, you know, we're starting to get that moon dust and use that to fuel our, our rocket fuel, um, to get the Mars. And then, um, you know, maybe hundred K is halfway to Mars. And then if we get past hundred K man, we're on Mars, baby, it's going to be some crazy ass shit. That's possible and people don't believe this and uh people think we're crazy and uh some people like see will say i'm the hopium dealer <laughs> but hey man you know um crypto will knock your socks off in this game if you are ready and you're ready for that great worst case scenario bitcoin stays between one thousand twenty thousand dollars for the rest of its history gets manipulated uh from the big uh boys in wall street and um they keep suppressing the price and uh, just trade the levels that we already know and you know uh, so you basically have a glorified savings account in that case. That's not yeah. so bad. Um, but um, what do you think, uh, Voice My Vision? Like, what do you consider moon territory um, for somebody who's maybe, uh, you know, new to the market a little bit, a little bit newer to the market, I guess I would say. Somebody with fresh eyes. So I actually, like, thought about this the other day. And you know how uh, in, like, the pennies, like, the ones that are under $5, you kind mm. of have, like, resistance at, like, one cent. Five cent, ten cent, and then one dollar. Yeah, like psychological. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking around like that. Uh, we're at that kind of phase right now, where we have like we struggle to get above ten thousand, and then the next one would be like the previous all time high, which is twenty k, right? Hmm. And then after that, of course, every ten thousand would have like I think we'll have decent resistance, but um, after twenty k, it might be like fifty, and then People will get surprised. I think um, by the time we get to 50K, people will just uh, be normalized by like $1,000 moves. Mm. And then the next big one would be like 50,000. And then after that, $10,000 move, like it would be normal. Like, oh, it moved $10,000 in a week. Oh, that's normal, you know? Yeah. So after 50, it'll be 100. And then after 100, it's like, <clears throat> It's just all speculation and uh, people that are gonna people that are speculating now like one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred fifty thousand, they're gonna be like, I told you so, I told you so. <laughs> and he, yeah, exactly. Uh, th if you watch um, Max Kaiser uh, recently, he has this shirt that says, "I told you so," or I, I think he says, "I told you so," or it says something to that effect. And then mm -hmm. the always has like a Bitcoin on his shirt. He's, he's wearing that for some he, things recently. He uh, said like 400,000 or something like that, didn't he? Here, here, here's the game. Here's the game of 2017 <laughs> that you guys, uh, as newer people to the game, have to understand is people will double down on their price predictions as we get closer to 100K. 
I'm going to keep looking at 100K because I, I would rather give a realistic conservative target and mm -hmm. hopefully we get a blow off top that goes to 200K, right? Something like that, I'm fine to do. Mm -hmm. And like people, are like when we get close to 100K, people are like, man, you're being conservative. We're going to a million, you know, shit like this. Um, I mean, it happened to uh, John McAfee, right? In uh, rest his, uh, you know, uh, part of his soul, I guess, or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> at the end of this year, but he doubled down, right? He went and said 500,000, um, you know, by, um, I forget, uh, by 20, the end of 2020, right? And then he was like, you know, Bitcoin was at 10,000 or under 10,000 at the time, went to 20,000. He says, okay, we're going to a million, baby. And, um, you know, we're going to see the same type of thing. So I, I don't discount that that price will exist at some point in time. It's potentially possible. But, you know, I would say a blow up top um, just by, you know, the stock to flow ratio thing being like 200,000, 150,000, being way above that 100,000 average that the stock to flow ratio gives us. Um, <laughs> and our friend Internet Lurker jumping here now is saying, exactly. you guys talking about a Wi-Fi price just came <laughs> up, um, putting out that as uh, obvious sarcasm. I appreciate the uh, the uh, putting that in there, man. I, I, I would even put it on there even if you weren't sarcastic. It's great. Um, Internet Lurker is the best troll, dude. I, use my <laughs> <laughs> dude, I love it. I love it. Uh, oh, good question. Anybody, any Chads in here? Anybody got that Chad token? Did you end up getting that? Yeah, dude, baby. I did. So um, tell us about it. What's the price? What's it doing? Um, after it released, I think it went up to like six cents. Then it went and dipped back down to about three and a half for a little bit. And then mm -hmm. recently, uh, last time I checked it, it went on a climb to about seven cents. Oh, wow. And, and where did you buy it? I bought it. It's only on Uniswap. No, no, no. I mean, uh, what price did you buy it? Oh, I bought it at about five to six Oh, sweet. So you're up already. Yeah. And then um, also, I, the one thing I'm worried about is like, what if this is like one of those, um, what are those uh, dot finance kind of tokens, you know? It's like, mm. it's destined to like pump and then dump, you know? True. Very true. And I mean, it's a meme coin. So you, yeah. with, with the Chad coin, you know, 100x gains or bust. So, um, yeah. you know, hold on to that self-fulfilling prophecy as much as you can um, yeah. I know, like, no, i'm not expecting it to succeed but if it does uh, i'll try and not be too greedy and take some profits you know yeah, yeah for sure yeah rule of three man remember the rule of three mm. yeah explain that to people man like uh give oh. it again, give it again give us that that juice so that that sweet info so the rule of three is something i came up with when i started investing into nfts where i would purchase three let's just say i bought this shirt this is one of a one of one of a hundred right i would buy three of them even if i didn't like it i would just buy three of them because over time uh in this market everything sort of pumps up right and if you're in a market where you have stuff with like cap supplies uh the the price will go up so uh in crypto it's not it's not out of the norm out of the normal over a cycle that uh, certain items or certain coins go up 10x 20x so if let's just say i i buy in at good times buy three of these shirts or in terms of that let's say buy three thousand tokens and the price triples all i have to do is sell a third of my bag hmm. and i've essentially de-risked myself i've taken all my cash out and now i have basically a risk-free asset there it, it's just all in profit essentially then from there as the price keeps going up i can start slowly laddering out obviously with the shirt you'd have to sell just one but but in, but in cryptos you know you can sell let's just say you have 2000 coins left maybe every every few weeks if the thing just keeps launching you sell, you start selling 200 tokens then next week 200 tokens or if it really goes up one week you sell you know a full the rest what's left of 1000 and but you still you end up you end up getting all your money out you have some pro, you have a lot of profit and then you still have 1000 tokens there or or nft or whatever you're thinking about there for a moon bag because oh, if yeah. this thing really long let's just say you chose the right project it just launches what ends up happening for most people is they sell the entire bag and that's the problem this is what happens with like with yeah. like well afraid with like wasabi with celsius is because um if you end up like selling the whole bag and it launches on you 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 even though you have all that profit you cannot buy back your bag anymore yep it's so what what if something what if the, like let's say just is I saw yeah I sold all my Celsius at fifty cents nice I bought it at eleven cents cool I'm sitting on like four x profit nice and then Celsius goes to a dollar fifty well I buy I don't it, I I could throw my entire profit principal and everything back and I'd only buy a third of my bag mm. right? this this cycle is literally 
exactly what you described. It's going to be a, like a battle of the steel hands. Who has the, who is not trading uh, yeah. everything? Who has got uh, bags full of multiples of three? Who is able to take some profit and hold the, the rest of the principal? And who's got enough conviction on which projects, right? So that's literally what it's going to come down to. And there's going to be, once it goes past 20K, 30K Bitcoin, there's going to be so much panic. The swings are going to be crazy. The people are going to be piling in and out. And it's just literally the ones that have that mindset and can hold are going to be the, you know, hold their core bags are going to be the ones that are awarded truly. Everybody else just captures kind of sections of the move, right? And they're missing out on the point of the eighty percent of the move. Yeah, so that's my, that's that, that's my that's my opinion, and I'm cool. that, I train my mindset to kind of be never capitulate until it's time yeah. to capitulate. <laughs> if you know what I mean? Yeah. In terms, yeah. In terms of yeah. That, you know, we had a guy on the show last night uh, from uh, Australia, a guy named Matt. He's uh, in charge of uh, he does a uh, trading channel for uh, forex trading, right? So he's a very mm -hmm technical analyst uh, doesn't look so he looks at the fundamentals a bit but he mainly looks at the technicals and he's saying you know in this technical analysis it's the exact same thing right uh let your winners ride and cut your losses short um you know it's the same thing with you know investing uh you know long term as well either way you know that strategy um is massively important and um i had a lot of heard about a lot of people in 2017 right saying man i never thought bitcoin would get even to 10k or 20k um, so I took all my profits because I bought it like a thousand and I took all my profits at like, you know, five or six thousand, right? Stuff like that. And it's like, you let your winners ride because you don't know where it's going to go. Of course, you don't want to hold it for, you know, everything for forever. But some of it, maybe you do want to hold through a bear market if you're really, really on it. But we got people like this in the house saying like, and you pray for no rug pulling, like the sushi swap stuff, um, which, yeah, that comes down to doing a little bit of fundamental analysis and understanding um you know how viable the thing is long term so if you can do that and be like okay this thing is you know a hot dog or a sushi swap then yeah maybe you know um you know take your profits a little bit early uh <laughs> depending on where you got in uh right. but yeah and then anorex says i pulled my own rug already that strategy from you like as well no, yeah, and, and the, the the reason I call it the rule of three was because of the shirts, right? But tech, but also it's kind of a play on words because the three, a three X in the so let's just say you buy an asset for let's just say a a dollar, you buy three thousand tokens at a dollar, three grand, right? The bare minimum when you should if you want to consider possibly selling a little bit to get your your original capital out, which is three thousand dollars, is a three X. But honestly, most of the times I don't take profit until I, I'm way up. Once I'm up like five, ten x or something, then I sell. I, I can sell a smaller portion mm. of the back where because like like I, I like some like with uh like with voice my ambition right. Sometimes when you're you're playing you're playing with these coins that could really just like they're really shaky. Maybe a hundred x like a two x that's fine to take to sell half the bag. That's yeah, a okay. With a hundred percent increase, you know, sell half. Um, it's the same exact same strategy, just lower number and get get a exactly. little bit yeah. quicker out just in case it's like really really volatile. But yeah, with even with most of these things, I mean, a two X is like, meh. You know, this is like I tell people, right? If you're not two Xing your bags during this bull run, um, you're do you're playing it wrong. Uh, right. Which you know, some people think is like, whoa, that's like crazy. That's a really big gain, right? And then there's some people who are like, two X, we're in it for ten X or more, bro. Like uh, the, the you know the crypto chads, right? So. <laughs> And that's why I do fundamental analysis is just yep. to confirm my conviction on a on a token. Obviously, you know, we, we we all of us can all of us find a trading opportunity. Sure, take. It. I mean, if you if you feel like yeah, that that seems like I'll try it, and then, or you can just look at the chart and stuff. But the reason I do fundamental analysis is 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 on the coins I want to hold a lot of cash into is so to make sure that like this thing has long term value as well as yeah, don't lowball us a two x game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, keep going on your point. Don't let I, yeah, I put yeah. it up on the chat. You don't have to read it right away. You keep going on your point, and then I'll just keep it here for right. uh, But uh, yeah, it's 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 just it's sort of like that's just kind of what's going on and stuff. So it's like uh, you just you know just yeah, you always want to keep a moon bag, always. You know, it's and the, the thing with fundamental analysis is the reason you like because on some tokens maybe you're just investing because like at a certain point you can see a storyline. Like a three month storyline, a quarterly storyline. Okay, uh, Tezos is going to release some uh, real estate, so it's sort of like buy the rumor, sell the news sort of thing. So you you have no emotional attachment to that token, so you'll just sell it all in three months. 
And that's yeah. not really even that trading that much because that's more of a swing trade or just a your trade you're 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 kind of setting up for a nice alley oop. But for a longer term hold like Celsius or Bitcoin or Litecoin or whatever you like, you know, whatever coin that's that floats your boat and you've done the research and you can stomach the volatility, there's a lot of gains to be made. And also it allows you to hold many X's and you you essentially you you want to kind of ladder out when you, the gains are crazy, when we're really in this bull market. Right. But I, I understand completely if someone wants to take a little bit of profit because, you know, you want to pay some expenses, something comes up. I mean, life happens, you know, and, and like I'm not like I'm not trying to be unreasonable because dude, like a, a lot of people on YouTube and Twitter and everything pretend they're balling and they're doing all this crap and shit. Dude, you, you got a couple kicks of the nuts in your life and shit. Yeah, you'll sell some crypto. To, we, to bail yourself out. we talked about this last night with the trading uh, MP uh, trader MP as well. We mentioned, um, uh, do you guys are you guys aware of Cheer de Meister? No, I'm sorry, Probably, no, maybe, no. I'm not sure. Anyways, look him up. He, he runs this fund called Adamant Capital. Um, really smart dude. He's from he's Dutch. Um, I met him uh, actually in Wall Street. Like a, there's a building right next to the bowl in Wall Street. We had a, a thing during consensus. It was just like 30 people. Um, uh, Bob Lucas was there. Uh, fucking Tone Vase was there. It was hilarious. Um, but yeah, we, you know, was listening to him talks, really smart dude. Apparently I'm, uh, you know, this is something that I read on Twitter. So, um, if, if I'm wrong, you know, double check me, but, um, apparently he blew himself up, uh, not himself, but also the fund a little bit. And he is, you know, uh, really good at what he did. I don't know if it was too much leverage or what it was, but he's been in the game a long time. And like you said, you know, you could be really experienced in this game and still, you know, get a few kicks to the balls and, uh, boop. And it's yeah. gone, right? So yeah. um, don't do that shit. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I think. You know what I think happens. <clears throat> um, yeah, but... So I, I, my speculation is that he shorted Ethereum because <laughs> <laughs> he he Tur, oh, Tur is he's he is one of the um, he's he's a top ten Bitcoin maximalist on crypto Twitter, <clears throat> and it yeah. just goes to show that the oh. arrogant mentality that you think your coin is the one to rule it all um can really get you wrecked uh yeah. when you're trying to basically trade this stuff so that's oh, why yeah that's why what? you sorry go ahead i was gonna say what happened to smeagol at the end of the lord of the rings right it's like um yeah, yeah greed got <laughs> him baby. You know, i mean you know i i love you know max kaiser i love the death i met him actually with along with charlie lee and when i met charlie lee i think he's kind of um bored of meeting people and like taking pictures because when i saw him at consensus i walked up i was like hey charlie like i want to take a picture he's, he's like okay you know and he's a really calm guy too and like just kind of like he barely even smile on the picture like you know <laughs> and like max yeah. max kaiser side he's like fuck man like I, I don't know what he's thinking exactly but he's like gets in on he just jumps in our picture i'm like fuck i didn't even know max kaiser was here this is great and uh you know because i love watching the show and um yeah it was a really good time and i was like you know uh oh thanks a lot you know because um you know, I think there's a lot of people. I'm like a noob in the space, you know, uh, compared to like all the old people, right? And right. like, um, I'm just like, oh yeah, I appreciate that, man. And um, because you know, there's a lot of people there. They stay in their click. You know, when you go to a, an event like that, you see all the old people staying with. You know, uh, like Adam Back was there. I didn't even want, like. I was like, holy shit! Like the guy, you know, uh, who came up with proof of work. Like I, I should go up and take a picture, but I was kind of intimidated. I was like fuck man like uh this guy's a fucking genius like uh he may be satoshi nakamoto or part of the original group i'm just like you know i'll leave him in peace uh but maybe next time i'll go go hit him up or something like that but um no, no next time with the COVID happening but um yeah like all, all these um people who are bitcoin maxis like i think they needed to kind of step back and be like well, what's the point of crypto like if you only have a savings account which you could say bitcoin is or digital cash or digital gold whatever you want to say it is if it's all those three things how is that a full financial system similar to you know what we got going in terms of financial system now what we're trying to do is decentralize an entire financial system there's going to be growing pains along the way uh, it's not going to be perfect so uh, bitcoin to be honest uh will benefit by having a lot of other cryptos behind it that actually are worth their salt like ethereum and then bring up the space and make it more mature more complex and more interesting but that's just my opinion uh, but i still do respect max kaiser specifically because he's been calling bitcoin since the dollar but you know, guys like Tier who are trying to short Ethereum, I'm like, yeah, you guys are gonna get wrecked. Um, you know, it's, it's too bad, but it is what it is. But that's just my opinion. I mean, I'd be smiling around too if I bought Bitcoin at a dollar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't be talking to normies like me if I was if I was Max, but uh, 
guy, the guy's legit, you know? Um, it's, yeah. The other thing I noticed is Channel Cat. Look at look at that money bag. <laughs> Call it on the phone with money. I like I like that meme. Anyways, let's say hi to the people jumping in the chat because um, we usually do that and I haven't done that yet. We've just been talking our heads off, um, ranting and raving like um, you know it's all good. So uh, Mo's jumping in the house. He thinks DeFi hasn't even started yet. Just warming up in his opinion. Uh, what up, Mo? Nice to see you jumping in here. Daniel M, now I know who you are. Um, I've seen you jump in here before, but did not know that he is uh, within the uh, crypto mindset course. I've hoped, uh, I've hopped on the moon bus and I'm ready to go. Digimedia dude, when moon, Greg B, uh, jumping in the house. Adam, uh, next stop, planet name it. Mavic. Mavic. What's that from? Is that <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. Okay. okay. Mavic, yeah, we're lucky they fought Cell. Or not, they fought Freeze, I'm sorry. Awesome. Awesome. Mass Pro Effect with the new uh, um, bull picture in there from uh, Dream Ball. Uh, Moon Gang, assemble. <laughs> I love it. We're, who else we got jumping in here today? Um, hello to you, Donald Pump. Uh, nice to see you jumping in here. That's quite the... Uh, the uh, That's, a sick picture. Picture. That's awesome, yeah. Um, Steven Robinson in the house, one of our uh, OG Moon Gangers, saying bye, Chainlink, I think. <laughs> uh, what else we got going? Black Magic, of course. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. uh, Across Canada in the house, Paul in the house, C Jules in the house, M Garcia in the house. Uh, where else we got? I'm just gonna run through these guys. Isaac Newbert in the house, um, Internet Lurker. Uh, nice to see you in here. Anorak, loving loving that comment. Uh, Channel Cat, as I said before. Elijah, believing we're going a thousand X in this bowl. Oh baby, he's on that moon moon juice for sure. And Iron Law. Uh, jumping in the house. Yikes. I don't know if it's that comment or another one. Um, <laughs> Jimmy M in the house. Sandbox baby. Jono Katz, uh, thank you for jumping in. The DeFi season will start in earnest when Hex breaks into the top 10. That should be interesting. Very, very interesting comment there. And uh, Bitcoin Chiba, jumping in the house. Yo, yo. And yeah, that's uh, our moon, uh, moon Gang peeps that we got going in the house today. So, um, Peep at my uh, mass adopter question, if you do not mind. All right, let me find it. Let me find it. Did you guys see that one? I didn't see. Uh, DBZ nerds. Let's see. I see see it's cool. Oh, here we go. Oh. I got a moon question, Charlie. What's your ballpark on Bitcoin and ETH when mass adoption? Oh, baby. That is a hard, hard question. I'll let you guys take this one on a roll. I got, I got some stats and some ideas, of it, but um, I want to, I want to hear what you guys think. Uh, go, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Jump on each other, man. No, no holds bar. All right, all right, fine. I'll start it. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, obviously, when the normies are going to come in, what is when the the news channels are going to go crazy? Bitcoin just broke its all time high today. It's at twenty one thousand dollars and some cents and stuff. And there's like. Oh wow! What's Bitcoin? What's going? That's when you start seeing the search histories go up, right? But it's really, I think, when Bitcoin is really like people won't be able to stop talking about it is once it starts going 25, 27. It breaks 30 grand for the first time. It's going to go. It's going to turn into a mania at that point. These were like, holy crap! Bitcoin at at 2019 was three thousand dollars, and today it's thirty thousand dollars. You know, for every dollar, you know, they started doing this whole math thing, you know, on TV yeah. and everything, right? All the talking heads, and then people are like, uh, Ethereum's up today about uh to seven thousand dollars today, or and you know, like it, it's just kind of in Ethereum it, earlier this year was or was it eighty dollars? That you know, just doing the comparisons and then creating FOMO in the market, and the, I really think it's it's completely has to do with the price of bitcoin when but but uh, the mass adoption part is sort of like uh i think like there's gonna be a giant fervor and the market's gonna go crazy but i mean true mass adoption i couldn't happen might not happen until the next bull run when the when we have another it's, it takes it takes a long time to get everyone in it because like it might catch everyone's interest and they buy in they lose some money and stuff and everything like that or they just trade wrong right or get into the wrong projects because they just don't know and they don't they're not being taught but um Real mass adoption is going to be much later on in, in a couple cycles from now. Because, I mean, look at the internet. There's still people around the world that don't have internet to this yeah. day. And the internet's been around since, I think, what, the 70s? I think. Yeah, in terms of, like, functional. I think it was getting popular in terms of outside of government usage in the late 80s, early 90s. And then, obviously, the internet boom in the late 90s. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's been portions of it that have been around for a while. Even You can even argue the idea behind Bitcoin has been around since uh, the early 80s with David Chalm's paper. Um, in the early 80s um, that he did for his PhD. Um, okay, any other takers on this question? 
Sure, yeah. So <clears throat> in terms of mass adoption, at least when you're looking at the price of Bitcoin, it really only takes a a few percent of the planet to adopt Bitcoin to go to astronomical prices. So I, I'm where, kind where of... Would you, I'm, where would you say we are now in terms of a percent of human beings that uh, have uh, some crypto? Sure. In terms of, he, in terms of uh, human beings, I'm looking... I'm really actually looking at fractions uh, well below uh, 1% of the entire planet. So uh, this cycle, I will be surprise if we even hit let's say like half a percent if there's actually some kind of data that actually goes through and um hmm. finds out let's say half half a percent of like the entire planet has has adopted bitcoin and i think what we'll find with data like that is it'll only take a, a few percent of the planet to actually adopt bitcoin which would cause or cryptocurrency in general to cause uh, absolutely astronomical prices so we'll go through multiple boom bust cycles and I think what we'll see over time is like, if you just, you know, if the end game in a, a few decades from now is even, let's say, four to five percent of the planet, I, I can, you know, see a, a multi hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Uh, granted, this is this is kind of looking, you know, decades ahead. Uh, I think for this cycle, I'll be really happy with even like a, a six figure Bitcoin. Uh, but it, it truly only takes a, a few percent of the planet. The the early adopters, so to say, to, to adopt the technology. And then later on, that's going to cause everybody else to be forced into adopting that as well, just just because of the value a lot of this stuff is, is going to accrue. So uh, there is going to be a lot of media attention once it goes above 20K. That's going to be actually one thing that's going to be relatively difficult to gauge because uh, in the last market cycle, so in the tw in the 2017 boom, when Bitcoin peaked at 20k, there was a, a bunch of media attention, which was really kind of the sell the narrative at that time. But in this case, when it actually breaks 20k and goes to a new all time high, the media is going to be all over this thing pretty much the entire market cycle. So it's going to be really hard to tell from the from the mania aspect just when the when the top really is for this cycle, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh this, this question, I think, is interesting because I think you can kind of extrapolate what happened in the last bear market and also stock to flow ratio to answer this question. I agree exactly what you said there, Wasabi. Um, Cedrils asks, uh, in addition to this, will we ever see a plateau, like kind of a, an area where it's hard for price to kind of go past for a while, kind of like, you know, when you learn a language or when, you're, when you learn a new skill, you get to a certain skill level and it's all of a sudden you get comfortable. And But also to get to that next level, it takes a lot of effort. So I definitely think we will. And I think we already saw kind of how that works. Um, you know, when Bitcoin went up to 20K, uh, we, you know, if you look at the stock to flow ratio, we went way over what that uh, price was supposed to be, right? And then we kind of went way below it at 3,000. And then we kind of, you know, leveled off and been like, okay, our, our comfortable price is 10K. And then now we're building up to that next, you know, plateau. So I think we have plateaus in every bull market. We've already seen them. They just have, have to be a little bit longer plateaus with each and every bull market due to lengthening cycles potentially. Um, and one thing to kind of put on some data to what Wasabi is saying here in terms of um, how does adoption take place? I really like this um, adoption curve uh, explanation here um, at this Investa Aura, the Art of Business Planning website. I've, I've never seen anything else on this website. I just used this from this website. But um, looking at this right um, penetration of market, right, they consider anything below 2.5% of the general population still innovators, right, still um, before early adopters. Wow. So, I mean, crypto is basically an infant, uh, you know, in the, even in the innovation phase. And a lot of people in crypto argue we're not in the innovator phase. We're in the early adoption phase. So it really depends on, you know, which community you're in. Are you looking at the global community? Or are you looking at the first world? Um, stuff like that. So I think this is, um, you know, we're still really early. And, uh, yeah, it might take, you know, a few decades to really penetrate um, you know, the entire globe. But then here's the Bitcoin addresses, right, in terms of, you know, um, <laughs> when is it going to be impossible for people to get? Basically, I think, you know, once we get into the 50K area, it's going to be very hard for people to get one whole Bitcoin. Even already, addresses um, that have one whole Bitcoin or more are only 2.3% of all Bitcoin addresses that currently are holding one Bitcoin or more. So if you're in that club, if you're in the multi-coin club or even the one coin club, um, you are... Um, in the crypto rich list. And um, 
you know, we could look at Bitcoin addresses and see the totals here, right? How many addresses there are globally, um, but that, you know, people can have multiple addresses, right? So, um, you know, if you add those addresses up, it's still less than 1% of the overall population of the world. Um, like Wasabi said, probably under half a percent. So, um, yeah, we're, we just might be a little bit early. A tad, <laughs> a tad bit. <laughs> no, good, good yeah. shit. Um, and, and that's really interesting to see the, the rich list because like there's a lot of people fronting out here that they have like, you saw that there was only like 103 wallets that had over 10,000 BTC in them. It's not that many. 10,000 Bitcoin, right? Yeah, yeah, BTC, yeah. It's not that yeah. many wallets. Wait, yeah. zero, zero, one percent have uh, 1,000 to 10,000 BTC. Um, that's 2,100 people. And then, yeah, 100 people have 10,000 to 100,000. And, and, oh, and there's just one wallet. wonder which one that Guys, is. Guys, I'm thinking uh, a, a $20 million <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> put some put some put some stack behind that moon juice boy <laughs> so what i'm thinking we get we're thinking we're thinking mass adoption right so i'm thinking about let's say let me take 60 percent of the population we have now so uh right now it's like around 7.8 billion 60 percent is um uh, almost almost 5 billion, a little under. And then if those 5 billion people put $100,000 each, of course, there's going to be a whole range, right? Uh, the poor people are going to put small amounts and the rich people are going to put like uh, millions into it. Hmm. And then <clears throat> I did it I did it by 21 million Bitcoin, but of course there's some missing or burned or whatever. Then that's how you get... 20 million plus dollar Bitcoin. Okay, so a little bit of a random number, but yeah, I get you. <laughs> when, with the, the, question, the, question, the question is not like when when mass adoption is it? It's when when, when cross chasm is the question. And like that that is the question. Like how and when, like what is it going to take? What's the catalyst that's going to cross that, that chart you just shown, like early mm. adopters to um, early majority or whatever it was on the chart? Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, because it's the, 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 what what is the definition of um, what's oh, the definition of um, okay. mass adoption? You know, we've talked about ten topics there, so I'd say that's the immediate question. That what's the uh, crossing that chasm gap? That's the that's the one. But look, who knows? Everyone's got their speculations. The governments start hoarding it. The countries start adding it to balance sheets. Institutions pile in. I don't know. Like, but that's the that's for me. That's kind of what I think about watching that that bridge. Yeah. And um, uh, let's move on to the topic for today, which is, um, right, uh, is the DeFi bull run over just beginning? How will it change uh, in the future? <laughs> um, let's see. That's good. Uh, that's the most opioid <laughs> answer I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> um, talking about the 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're all good. Um, so talking about the DeFi space, one thing I, I want to mention here, because we do have uh, HODL jumping in, which uh, I really appreciate you jumping on, especially at your like 3 a.m. man. It's uh, great to have you here. So I want to pick your brain and um, really you know, understand uh, some of the knowledge that you have and bring that to our audience here today. So one thing I want to just kind of mention as a kind of a preface to this is what's changing in DeFi right now um, in terms of maybe what's the most recent news. And then uh, looking at this news, like how do we kind of see this space uh, maturing? Um, because I think it's going to be a little messy. It's not going to be like, oh, everything is completely decentralized now and everything works. There are no bugs. Obviously, there's going to be some um, stuff in here that um, is uh, an issue uh, or has some issues with it. And um, uh, thank you, Donald Pump. Appreciate it. He says, I love your streams at Cultivate Crypto. You have the, uh, your dope snowmobile there. He says, I'm a hexagon. No problem, bro. Still love you. It's all good. Um, Hexkins unite. It's all it's all great. Um, so um, let's let's uh, jump over to this bit of news here. So a couple of things, just kind of funny one here is CZ saying, which one is crazier, this or DeFi? Here we have an exercise bike for three hundred dollars, an iPad for four hundred, an exercise bike with an iPad on it for four thousand. <laughs> <laughs> a company that sells a subscription for an exercise bike with an ad, uh, iPad on it um, worth uh, billions. Uh, good stuff from CZ. He, he's got a point. That's a perfect point. Great Shout point. out to Peloton, baby. 
<laughs> Wait, where are you talking about? Oh, the, the company's called Peloton. Oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, have, they have all these commercials these days, right? Uh, they got in. They got some hot water last year because, uh, well, not hot water. It was, just, it was a really funny commercial where like the husband got his wife a Peloton, was basically telling the, his wife like lose weight, and mm-hmm. then she started like, "Have I lost enough weight, John?" Have I- <laughs> people like loved it. That's what blew the company up. Was, like that that commercial. Are they still married? <laughs> I do. I'm sure. Yeah, that's funny as hell. Um, this one here, right? Uh, sees DeFi is great. I love it. But CFI, uh, centralized finance, is about to give it a run for its money. Two advantages of CFI. He's he's coining this interesting new term, which is uh, I think actually relevant. Uh, to DeFi, right? So deep. And two points that he's making here is exchange vetted projects and tokens, right? For for this centralized, a little bit more centralized uh, crypto finance, um, not bulletproof, uh, and sometimes may even be negative depending on the centralized exchange. Uh, in this case, Binance. Um, but a reputable uh, centralized exchange is uh, financially incentivized to maintain it. I uh, think ICO versus IEO. Um, with DeFi, you have to choose a single project with CFI, uh, for example, Binance is staked on, or BNB is staked on Binance, will earn multiple yields uh, simultaneously. Um, hard to ignore. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, I mean, CFI is not going away. So that we're definitely going to have to bridge the gap between the two. Is, um, definitely understand that. And then here's funny something else that's funny from him recently is he is chasing DeFi, right? Um, he had a decentralized exchange way before Uniswap, and Uniswap blew him out of the water, right? Some kid out of a basement, um, taking an open source code, uh, making open source code, putting it out there for the world, um, is getting more liquidity than uh, the uh, uh, DEX from uh, Binance, which is interesting. So he's chasing this market too. Um, you know, he's a little bit like a Goliath. They can't, he can't move as fast as these nimble, small open source projects. But he's saying, please email uh, build at Binance.org to apply for funding. Uh, and move to the smart chain, come take his money. He's giving out a hundred million dollars to different DeFi projects that he wants to put on Binance chain, um, which is interesting. So any of you guys out there, go and start taking CZ's money um, and um, helping him build uh, CFI and DeFi, which he calls uh, this connection to DeFi, um, which I think does uh, apply to Celsius in my opinion. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but last thing that I want to mention before we get into this topic is I think all these things from CZ are interesting, which is um, Binance CEO wants more Ethereum-based DeFi projects to join his platform. Uh-oh, uh-oh, he says this quote here, um, Binance Chain never aimed to replace Ethereum. Binance Chain is just Ethereum compatible. Um, smart projects are giving their users more options, options for cheaper fees. He is uh, slightly bending the knee there a little bit to Ethereum, in my opinion, um, which is a positive thing for the crypto space. And, um, you know, it's better to have, um, uh, you know, allies in this space and uh, projects working together rather than, you know, cultism or tribalism, um, you know, toxic, making this space uh, really toxic. So I do think all these DeFi projects, you know, finding ways to work together, make everything legit and avoid things like sushi swap um, is really, really important. So. Um, with that, all those things in mind, um, uh, like, what are your guys' take on DeFi at the moment? Is it not going away? All that stuff from CZ there. How do you think it's going to affect um, things like either Celsius? I mean, we're just going to have an open topic here um, for the second portion of the show here. So, um, yeah, how do you feel about all of this? I mean, it's a lot to kind of chew on, obviously. It's a big yeah, topic. that's, that's a, like, where do we start with it? So yeah. let's talk about let's talk about the current state. This is just my opinion, and I don't. Does anybody, any on this panel, kind of dabble in DeFi? If you, um, in terms of, I mean, I think we all do. Like, yeah, yeah. I I don't do like what kind of projects are you talking about? All the crazy, like, uh, like food food related products. Oh, Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, the farming. I, uh, I tried it once, and the most recent one I tried was uh sashimi and i actually stayed up to like um 4 a.m looking at the telegram even though like i already exited and made my profits i just wanted to see everyone who was getting dumped on like how their psychology worked Mm -hmm. and even to this day like in the telegram people are waiting for it to pump up because it went from i think three dollars to six dollars 
and then it, it just fucking dumped from there. To where? <laughs> Like it's, it's at like 40 it's like 40 cents right now <laughs> and people are like guys buy some more it's gonna pump up <laughs> I, I think i think i think the parallels in this DeFi um farming world are crazy right because the smartest people that i've spoke to in recent times are doing this stuff and they're making a killing hmm. and then you exactly what you just said there um the dumbest people are doing it as well right so you've got the you've got this it's just too easy at the moment isn't it so is is DeFi staying around uh, in that sense no it's not i think i don't think it will last too much longer because it's only you only have to get wrecked once and then you're not coming back are you and there's only so many people to wreck right same as yeah. mm -hmm. 2017 again so just to kick off like this is a massive topic but I, that's my opinion i don't think this thing's sustainable Companies like Celsius do um, dabble in um, some of this, but not these new protocols. Kind of, I think Compound and Curve they've been playing with um, from the farming mm. side. So, um, yeah, they're going to stay around, I think, until those rates going to dry up or whatever happens. But yeah, I think that that's just my thoughts. This farming is just ridiculous, right? And you have to be like mm. super, super smart, understand Ethereum, smart contracts, look for the bugs, go through it all live it breathe it and then you'll make loads of money and just dump it on noobs basically that's kind of what's happening so yeah, that's yeah. good actually that you've been in that telegram track because i really haven't got the patience to do that so <laughs> nice to yeah that's exactly what i thought would have been go going on in there yeah yeah also yeah. another thing i saw ahead, yeah also another thing i saw is like whenever these coins yeah. are pumping there will be people in the telegram or the uh or the Discord, whichever one they have, and they will be spreading FUD like crazy. They'll be spamming the fucking chat because they missed the pump. And what they're trying to do is get the oh. price down so they could get in. And, of course, the dumb people, they sell off because they believe the FUD. And then they fucking miss the pump and just uh, exit early. And then they just pay all those fucking gas fees. Hmm. Yeah, you, you can tell it's coming to an end, right? Because the first protocol, whatever it was, I can't even remember what the first one was, that lasted a little while, and then it lasted a little bit less. Mm -hmm. And now it's kind of like overnight, it goes to $4,000 and down to zero. Like, so you can almost tell by mm -hmm. those length, the shortening cycles, if you like to call it, that it's kind of, yeah. you know, it, how many more up and downs in a day are we going to see? We went from 4000 to zero. I saw one go the other day. I don't know what that yeah. hot dog or whatever that hot was. Dog, That's exactly. I mean, if you look yeah. at that Bart Simpson move, like, <laughs> a little bit at the top for it. That, <laughs> you know, that, that is a legit chart pattern and that equals R E K T R R E K T wrecked. <laughs> exactly. So I agree on that. And CJ has mentioned something interesting on this too. He says you need to be willing to risk a certain amount of capital to make it worthwhile. Otherwise gas and liquidity are going to burn you. Uh, also, yeah, I mean, you're going to basically have to say goodbye to that money and just, uh, it's, it is definitely walking into the casino. Um, of uh the crypto sphere in my opinion see yeah. also says, do you think bnb is worth watching um it's worth having if you're going to be using the binance exchange obviously for that purpose um i don't think it's going to you know as an exchange coin i think they, they get a lot of liquidity and they get a lot of uh movement on the price when they're early on but then they get to a, pretty much like a stable coin to some extent after a while they do continue moving up but it's not going to give you the same gains as a lot of other things so it's probably not um, going to give you the biggest gains, right? But it's going to maybe give you some small, okay gains. Um, so, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not, you know, it's only useful for uh, lowering the fees on Binance and, and eventually the fees yeah. um, won't be lower anymore. So, um, yeah, and a hairy butthole, our Bart Simpson uh, of the uh, of the group says, don't disrespect Bart Simpson. <laughs> oh, it's great. Uh, imagine which, uh, imagine holding one of these protocols overnight, one of these farmings overnight. Just imagine it. You're just literally never going to sleep. Imagine holding mm -hmm. that for a couple of days. I don't know if any of you guys have done that, but like, no, nope. you can't, right? Like, that's like, chicken is borderline, like, you know, could disrupt your life. That thing is mm -hmm. just going to wreck your life, like, completely. Like, there's no way you can hold from 4,000 to zero overnight and just wake up and just never quit crypto. Like, that's just. Yeah. It's, it's just insane. horrible. Like, absolute, that's just my opinion. Absolute so I, yeah, I I think um, the DeFi. I mean, I mean, the bubble could go on for a while. Just the the narrative or whatever. Um, I guess like a lot of like new buyers are getting kind of trapped into. Like the narrative can tra change multiple times throughout like the market cycle. But um, generally, like I'm super skeptical on DeFi. I kind of share. 
a very similar opinion where a lot of it's not going to be sustainable. So my usage in terms of DeFi is like, I just like to use Uniswap. Um, I think mm -hmm. it's great just using that as a decentralized exchange. Uh, people can trustlessly exchange basically value to each other. I find that amazing. Um, so that's kind of the, yeah, exactly. I was about to right, go, go right to sell token. Um, so that that's really been one of the few tokens I, I kind of routinely buy through Uniswap is the token. Um, and really, it's there's really only a couple assets I really like to buy through Uniswap with that being um, actually the, the most frequent one that I'll make buys into. Uh, so at the very least, like they'll still be decentralized exchanges, but the DeFi bubble is going to wreck a lot of people. Like yeah. it's just, and it's, it's just, it, it's just the way money works. Like what ends up happening is um, junk money ends up going into better forms of money, like Ethereum, Celsius, uh, Bitcoin. So uh, I mean, if somebody's really good at making money in the, in the bubble, I have no, um, I don't have any, you know, I don't wish anything bad on that or anything like that. Like if somebody's good at it, you know, all to them, but Sure. If you're if you're not familiar with like how a lot of this stuff works, and you have to be extremely careful because, um, yeah, you don't want to get caught in like a very liquid token on yeah. Uniswap, and then you lose basically you know fifty percent of your portfolio in 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 a day. Yeah, and, and some of these decentralized exchanges like Uniswap don't have the same functionality as like a normal exchange. Even if there was enough liquidity, um, they still don't have. Um, uh, right stop losses or anything like that. So even if yeah. there was enough liquidity to hit a stop loss and get your order put in, um, so you stop uh, prevent yourself from getting wrecked, that a function does not exist on Uniswap. Um, and so yeah, you you have that possibility to wake up one day, and um, yeah, that is just not something I'm I'm willing to do. But yeah, um, you know, like I agree with exactly what you're saying there, and I think. One question I have for you guys, which is interesting, because we got a lot of people interested, you know, in sell here, sells pumping. Um, we got a lot of good uh, information in here. We got people from all stripes and all uh, different areas of the cryptoverse uh, in here. But what you know, I, I can't see, I can't go back and look at all the sell questions. But right. we got Isaac Newbert in the house saying sell price is going to ten dollars plus currently at uh, fifty or under fifty cents at the moment. So anything under fifty cents is if it's going 10 bucks is massively great right i believe that's a very big possibility paul says sell will overtake bnb um yeah i mean they have different use cases right so it's like a lot of these cryptos in terms of overtaking in terms of market cap sure definitely um but in terms of taking the uh the use cases i mean a different story so i guess it depends on how you look at it there but um yeah i do i'm really bullish on sell in terms of market cap i think it is climbing it's in the top 100 i believe it's around 80 right now um uh, let me check real quick it is yeah. Yeah, it's 74. Oh, even better. On Coin Gecko, at least. Cool. Yeah, it's Moses, listed, didn't it's you like uh, recent? Oh, you can go. 89. 89. Sorry, it's, yeah, it's listed wrong on Coin Market Cap. Like the market supply mm. is is not defined properly, so it doesn't. I don't know what it is. I don't even look at Coin Market Cap. It's just manipulated. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, they do that all the time. I'm wondering like where they exactly get their data from. If you can double check it, or if it's just like they get it from CZ and because now he bought it. <laughs> They so. get it from whoever's paying them the most for advertising, and then they just derank everybody else's coins. Like, let's just call it out. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. That's just that's what yeah. happens, right? Crypto.com are there all over right. the banners. So, Crypto.com, BlockFi, everybody else is plastered all over the website. So, mm -hmm. yep. when, I, when I did a research video for the course we did, I literally was like typing up like, so this is how you would like, you would look up Celsius on YouTube. The first thing when I searched up, there was a fucking a, a Nexo ad right above uh, Celsius. Yep. Like, they're, they're paying money to have ads in Celsius. It's so fucking funny, dude. All these platforms are like, they're doing some slimy shit. There's like literally like almost hex level of, of gatekeeping on Celsius. Mm. That I, I I thought I thought yeah like I only I, I thought it was only going on to maybe like hex because people just didn't like it right, but then I started noticing the same shit was going on with Celsius as well. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? Not getting properly listed on Coin Market Cap, um, getting excluded from like top lists and stuff. Like uh, they did this in um, I think it was BlockFi. They released a list of the top or of like basically they just went like these are the top companies doing loans right now, and Celsius was nowhere. Yep. They've got yeah. it. There's literally like independent consultants now that are supposed to be 
consulting on the market, kind of the space, how it's fleshing out, who are the players, literally excluding Celsius out of all of their analysis, mm -hmm. like clearly paid off. It's exactly. like Coin Telegraph, Coin Everybody Else, all of the media outlets. They're literally just like just writing complete and utter nonsense, like Alex Mashinsky, yeah. mm -hmm. Hammer, and it's it, just it, ridiculous it's what this stuff is. Right? Which is yeah. actually a leading indicator for the ones that you should look at, right? Yeah, like if yeah. if at the moment we're not pumping and we're not um, trending and we're not all of this, literally put your money in that because the rest of it isn't going to last like yeah. over three, four year period. And it's like, a great, it makes the opportunity for us to get in a little bit better as well because yeah. it's still under yeah. the radar. Uh, which is it's, ha it's been able to do exactly what Dollar Cost said there, like do the fundamental analysis, like what is fundamentally sound here and like what will last and what is yeah. sustainable for like five years and literally back in that opposed to looking at kind of what's shiny and in the lights in front of you. That's kind of... They're, um, they're, they're the most grown up company in crypto. I, I yeah. shit not. Just the way they act, the whole team, it's... Like it's best in class. Their YouTube channel I like. Their Telegram's really good. They're helpful. I mean, like I haven't had one bad experience while using Celsius. I, I, I and like that's crazy. You know what I mean? There's like nothing really outside of maybe like they're they're the apps really really it's overly safe. It's like annoying sometimes. <laughs> like how many times it made me log back that's in. Annoying, and yeah. yeah, it's a little annoying on that part, but it's um why don't the bigger like Celsius? Oh, it's because it's they're kicking their ass. So essentially they they are. <laughs> They're paying so Celsius is paying about eight. So let's just say they make ten percent, right, on it on Bitcoin as just an example, fake numbers right here, right? And they'll pay you eight percent. What most other businesses do is like they earn ten percent, right? But they'll only pay you five and a half. So they're trying to keep a bunch of that percentage for themselves, right? And what what Celsius is exposing is like you guys are keeping a lot more cash than you actually need. Right. So what, what a lot of these guys are doing because they're running so many ads and they're trying to grow so big, they're running deficits and inflating their actual uh, numbers above Celsius. So like, let's just say I'm, I'm where Celsius is 8% um, on Bitcoin. They're posting nine and a half percent. And they're like, how are you guys surviving? That's so you guys are surviving on 5%, a 5% profit margin for your business plus with all the ads that's why like things like nexo defi um, block uh, blockchain.com and and blockfi have to raise funds every six months because they, they keep running out of cash yeah mm -hmm. all block blockfi are literally on c funding c round funding now and they've done that's i don't know what they've right, done yeah. like they're on c round funding and they're just like miles behind celsius and celsius right. is like not even spent a penny of its funding yet is a round yeah. That's like really it's not cool. even spent it it's just sat in the bank doing nothing i, I guess they're going to start to spend it like next week or whatever but I that's the parallels that. yeah i'm so mad i didn't buy the fucking equity i wanted to buy oh, that so bad <laughs> i couldn't do it in the united states the laws are just such it's it's, it's so, so hard only 99 investors allowed from america and you have to be like a million dollar balance and all of this accreditation is crazy I, right like, I it's hard enough question. anywhere else so yeah. what what's with that re that regulation in the United States on Celsius? What's keeping it from um, you know being able to sell to to U.S. investors directly? What's the uh, what are we talking about the the equity or the token? Both. Both. So the equity is just kind of accreditation investor accreditation rules, isn't it? It's just generic. I think you're only mm -hmm. you know per company you're only allowed ninety nine investors. And look to to even get an opportunity to invest in something like that is very very rare the way that they've set that vehicle up that investment vehicle um through a special company and it's um through bank to the future check out bank to the future everyone if you want to see something cool there's a lot of good um they've had kraken on there they've had um uh, bitfinex they've had uh, coinbase in the past and kraken was a 200x return on investment so and that's simon why dixon, that's that yeah simon dixon that's the one yeah and he's he's been around since man. like very rich man yeah exactly so that's the reason on the um, the equity why you can't. And obviously, dollar cost has tried that process and probably it was like teeth. There just wasn't enough uh, seats on the bus, I guess, to start with. And I think they reopened it and they're going to try and do something else. I heard that on the B series, they're going to have another 99 investors. But I don't know how true that is. So maybe you can get in there. Um, and then on the sell, the sell, sorry, go on. Oh no! I just heard that they they uh, they try to make, they change the laws a little bit for accreditation, where you can take I think a C ninety five test for accreditation. So it's it's a uh, it's a financial it's a financial test or so to become like uh, yeah. not an accredited investor, but it's almost like you're um, a financial advisor 
if you can pass that financial advisor test, you are it's you could become accredited, but it's very it's very difficult. I mean, literally, like the average, the, the in order for to pass a test, you basically have to study for three months. Mm. Yeah, you need um, you need yeah. you need the million dollars, I think, in in balance as well, don't you, for American accredited investor, and you need like yeah. all three hundred thousand dollar net worth uh, uh, per year, sorry, uh, income as well, joint income you can do, or diff there's different options. I didn't study it too too much because I wasn't from the US, but mm. it's it's difficult. Um, what were you gonna say, was happy? I was gonna say, yeah, you're you're right on the capital requirements because uh, yeah. I remember looking into that for grayscale specifically for the premiums on their single asset products and they uh they one of the first things they state is you you need to you need to have at least like a million dollars or more like on your balance sheet to qualify as like an accredited investor so the seed not capital that, requirement not I'm including your house not including your house and oh and seriously with, okay i didn't know that and liquid yeah. assets liquid assets liquid assets okay do, do they count yeah, Bitcoin they count liquid assets? Like, yeah I, I think they could actually. I think they could. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then, and then, Hoddle, you were gonna say on the other side of the coin too. Yeah. The other, the so on the question. look, we should have done. You should. I wish you'd have got in because we could have done a major moon math on that equity maturity. <laughs> that would have been fun. But we can do that one another time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's, 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 we're here to. We're here to talk about whatever we talk about today. We're not going to solve yeah. all the world's problems. Yeah. So the sell token's different. So it's done on jurisdiction, like state. And look, I'm not American, so I'm not an expert on America. And I probably don't spend enough of my time kind of trying to understand it just because it doesn't affect me. But it's basically every state has its own rules. Every state, uh, New York's just open, for example, uh, for sell, um, sell on sell, I think. But look, the, the Celsius spends an insane amount of money on lawyers trying to work this stuff out. They're not going to offer anything that isn't um, legit or has the lawyers uh, back in. So it's it's painful. I can put a link in a minute into the into the chat. So uh, there's like a list of you can see where's available, where's not um, for earning and sell or touching sell. Or um, but obviously you've got the Uniswap route, which obviously you've got to try and stay within the, the regulations of whatever you're trying to do within your region. But it's just pulling teeth. A lot of these regulations aren't made. A lot of there's a lot of gray um, areas where it it doesn't say you can't, but it doesn't say you can. So to summarize it, that's basically what it is. It's just you have to be patient and wait. And we're missing Celsius is missing out on a lot of um, revenue in terms of like U.S. customers and different things. And um, but that's going to come. It's just going to take time. And this yeah. fundraiser that we've just touched was we touched on. I think they raised anywhere. You know, I've, the fundraising the numbers i saw were 20 million and they plus they said they had some strategic investors which is the potential of another 10 million that's still to be mm -hmm. clarified as far as i'm concerned but there's mm -hmm. um but that a lot of that money is going to go to licenses and, and to different things so it'll open up a lot of doors that's what i'm trying to say nice nice i like that yeah. um and uh yeah I, I think we want to go into this topic you know in, in whatever facets people just kind of jump in people's mind feel free to jump on you know talking about celsius talking about other things but um, for related to DeFi space, uh, Elijah has a question. What is your view on Synthetics Network? Um, any, anybody have a, a view on that? Thanos, like I am inevitable. <laughs> and, and then why? I don't really know much about Synthetics. So. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of like um, Wall Street's wet dream. They love synthetic assets. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's sort of like they borrowed a Uniswap's idea of, pool, of, pooling, of pooling ETH and the asset, right? But instead of it being just for one market pair, the pools for everything, for everything, for the most part. So you may, uh, I think they, they might they might break it off into five categories. So let's just say you have a real estate pool, equities pool, you have a crypto pool, you have maybe a DeFi pool, and then you have something else pool, right? But uh, what? But when you're in that sort of pool, you could have a low liquid asset and in a, a fake version of it, and then you'll be able to trade and be able to cash out a crazy amount of money on it. Awesome. because there's a big pool there where like mm -hmm. uniswap let's just say maximum there's about you know three hundred thousand dollars of liquidity in there you can't pull out a crazy amount of money out of it because you would just you would just get a destroy you just get destroyed essentially by slippage mm -hmm. yeah. right 
So it, it, that's what that's why it's so interesting. So a lot of these Wall Street guys, they just want to be able to touch this. They they kind of just want to play around in this area because they can do all kinds of crazy things in in the market and everything. And then one what but what, one what, one thing I'm a little afraid of with synthetics networks is that um, to make synthetic network work, there has to be an oracle system behind it. So each so these so the, you think they're partnering with that chain <laughs> chain link, right? Of course. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. But, here, but here's here's the pickle right here. So let's just say Chainlink is perfect, right? There's nothing wrong with Chainlink. Chainlink reports exactly the news, right? But Chainlink is linked to the real world, right? So let's just say they're, they're linked to, Bloom, let's just say Bloomberg, I don't know, Wall Street Journal, and then whatever, the Dow, right? So let's just say that for some reason on, on, a, on a day of market, market turbulence, they misreport a number. The, um, Chainlink is working perfect. It's it's the real world that messes up, and because Chainlink is an intermediary between the between DeFi and the real world, uh, this gives a not wrong number. This messes up, hmm. so I mean synthetics network and the pricing. So people could think, well, well, the price is going up. The, why isn't the price? Why isn't the price going up? The price isn't going up. Why? Why isn't that, te- Tesla? Tesla's up a thousand dollars today. What what's going on? It could there's, there could be some things where like with like these oracles where they can get clogged up. Or the, the data, or the data is not um, going into it because of high gas fees, or some something's going on with the Ethereum network mm-hmm. that it just like people people could be like, I missed out on all the gains, or maybe it, it misreports it, or doesn't move, or it just stays stagnant. So you could have this. There's there's a lot of weird stuff that could happen with the, the or not saying that the oracle is bad or anything. It just could be that either Ethereum's messing up, or the, there's a real world problem where the price isn't keeping up with other indices. So you so there's there's a really big thing where you have to make sure the oracle that they're using, they're they're using the right sources, right? But sometimes they're not using enough sources. What if all the sources are wrong? Hmm. And that's yeah. not keeping up the price. Yeah, the same problem that we have that's potentially possible as well in the CFI space, right? With um, like a bank like JP Morgan or the Nasdaq, right? They're all, you know, they're all run by sophisticated computers, but um, they all, you know, have human, human beings inputting a lot of the data and stuff like that as well. So um, I think with any system, you know, blockchain is not perfect, computers aren't perfect. So humans aren't perfect either. I mean, computers are obviously better than most. So um, yeah. those hiccups and those things will happen. But um, yeah, I think that happens in the traditional space just as well. Yeah, I think I think it's going to run pretty well, but there's we're kidding ourselves to think there's not going to be some hiccup. Oh yeah, with, and with, with chain link or any or any of these or any or right. Not saying there's because I'm very bullish on I'm very bullish on these oracles short term, mm. medium term. Well, I think long term when when the when things are going crazy when there's so much demand there's going to be sort of a freeze up in the network. But yeah. not not now, but possibly. Okay. Yeah, kind of the same thing as what we got with Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? The the fees end up getting really high. You end up getting a slower network, the more people that jump on it. And so you know, right now, right, with only a few billion dollars or a few hundreds of billions of dollars in the crypto markets, still a baby, right, uh, compared to any other financial system. The one good thing that Bitcoin does have, right, Bitcoin specifically, right, um, which, you know, uh, is a decentralized financial tool. Um, you know, so anybody who's like against DeFi is like, well, do you like Bitcoin? <laughs> you know, uh, obviously, you know, it's it's part of the game. But um, you know, Bitcoin's had you know virtually no downtime, you know, since its beginning. Whereas you know, the banks have downtime t- downtime every week. So I, I do think, yeah, it's not not a perfect system. All these bugs in the different Ethereum code um, will still exist, and people will find them. Um, you know, find vulnerabilities and take advantage of them. But what I like, that's kind of what I like about with Kusama uh, and Polkadot, right? They have the thing called a uh, hack Kusama um, back here in August, which was, please come hack us, um, right? Bring in some white hat hackers, um, really test the system. I think those types of projects, which are willing to, um, you know, test themselves first before really going um, full time. online with like Polkadot or any other ecosystem, um, you know, those are the coins which will have a little bit more strength coming into the market. We can kind of, Look at them and be like, okay, is this coin just coming out of the market? And it might have a bug in its Ethereum code or whatever uh, ecosystem it's coming from, or um, is it already testing itself, um, trying to actually bring in some people to test it, and then has maybe we could have a little bit more confidence in the uh, technology side so that um, what it intends to do actually, you know, uh, continues to to uh, be successful. So, um, but yeah, this DeFi game has a lot of different angles we can take on it. So um, that's just one of them. But um. Jacob, you your internet, you're good now. 
Uh, it might cut out again, but uh, one thing I wanted to say about like these yield farming things. Yeah, go for is, it. Is uh, can you guys hear me yeah. now? Yep. You're a little delayed by about thirty seconds, so we'll just let you run. Okay. So while. yeah. Okay, yeah, but uh, if you guys are gonna mess with this, uh, these DeFi projects, like these food tokens, like I would suggest that you don't. If like, unless you're like super like knowledgeable about how to do it, because if you're not in within like the first hour or two of these uh, tokens providing liquidity on Uniswap and then um, basically their website working, um, you. Honestly, I think you probably missed out the gains because within probably eight or ten hours, uh, in that time window, it's either in, or yeah, in that eight to ten hour window, it's gonna pump and dump. Like whereas um, sushi, it took like maybe a week, but now um, I think uh, what like Hoddle mentioned, um, the the time window for you to get your gains and get out is just getting shorter and shorter. So it's only like a matter of time where like it's not even possible to like get in get out really safely unless like you get in within the first 10 minutes of it opening and then um another thing i was going to mention was um uh, fuck i forgot uh let's see oh yeah the apy so another thing that uh you want to watch for is if you're going to do it, there's websites I noticed like the the AP. Oh, cutting out a little bit. Yeah, he froze up. <laughs> All right, we'll get back on here. Right when right when he was about to drop the knowledge. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> that always happens. That it always happens. So. Dude, it, it's right. It's, it's like right on the drop. <laughs> so let me let me tell you the secret that got me all my. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling the John McAfee there, no, I'm joking. Right, right. Um, I'm gonna grab some water real quick. I just ran out of my coffee, so um, uh, you know, keep asking questions and uh, keep thinking of this. I think um, you know, we got a question from Sejols yeah. here. Chef Nomi's connection to band cause for concern. It, it it is a little bit to, to tell you the truth because bands pretty pretty well it's pretty well connected to Binance and then there's been a little conspiracy theory that we've that I've had as well as some people in crypto the hex community and stuff everything that we've been saying that these these you know Binance uh, uh, Coinbase have been essentially some of the people behind making some of these scam tokens to discredit yeah. DeFi. Mm. And you know, and then it's it's it is kind of crazy. It's sort of like is band gonna do well? I think it is. It really is. Like I'm buying it, but these fuckers are probably maybe it's not band itself, but maybe their parent companies or, or people in the company are making some of these scam tokens. And I know these allegations are a little bit. I, mean, I have no proof to pr I mean, but a lot of people are starting to kind of believe it now, especially when like they uh, they looked up the, the the service provider for band network and there's the other five tokens were all basically farming tokens along with sushi which is pretty which is pretty cr crazy little coincidence if you don't <laughs> if you think about it like so, so I you, missed some good stuff here right? what's the coincidence oh um, so chef nomi or you know the guy who created uh, yeah. sushi swap yeah sushi swap well they they were doing some investigate some people on Twitter and Reddit or whatever they were investigating him right well they they pretty much ran where he was running his website from so the the provider that he was using was only being used by five other projects one of them was Band Protocol which has okay. linked Binance so mm -hmm. people are starting to pull strings together that like Binance and Coinbase are some of these people that are organizing some of these oh yeah there's on CoinMarketCap, there was all sorts of advertisements for Band, and uh, it kept, you know, uh, it was put up in market cap like um, Hoddle mentioned before, right? Um, there's definitely some manipulation on Coin Market Cap with different things in terms of the data that's coming into them. So they definitely promoted Band because they saw, oh, Chainlink, people are loving these Oracle services. This is a trend we can jump on and make some money real easy. Um, so I, I agree with that 100%. And Cedro says, yeah, CC's he's a slippery one. Says, I take it you saw the Chico video. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah, Chico, Chico has you know some interesting stuff going on. I haven't seen that one either yet, but um, 
uh, might be one to, interesting one to check out. And uh, yeah, voice my vision. You jumped off as soon as you were about to lay some knowledge. And uh, Iron Law says, my APY. <laughs> I don't know. So um, what were you going to say there? Oh, no. No. <laughs> Can't hear you, bro. Oh, can you hear you now? Nope. Hello? There you yeah, go. Yes. Okay, so um, another thing I noticed with these websites is uh, the APY keeps on going higher and higher. But, of course, the more riskier ones, which use the, the native token, get the highest APY. And that's what people go for. And um, so that's what I did. I went for the native token. And then for Sashimi, they were connected to an already established um, coin called uh, ELF, E-L-F. Mm. So what you would do is to get the highest APY, um, which I saw was like 88,000 whenever I started, you buy ELF and Sashimi, and then you stake your liquidity tokens, right? Then... Um, of course, the higher the APY, the faster you get your uh, native token. But um, one thing I noticed is like once these APYs get down to like twenty thousand or ten thousand, that's whenever people really start dumping these coins. Huh. It's like um, there's no point in staying in if you can find a new project that has even higher APY. Just sell everything. Don't care about the gas. Because you already made your profit if you're playing with more than, let's say, two thousand mm. dollars, and if you're not playing with like multiple thousands of dollars, I don't think you guys should do this. Because uh, with with these projects, you're so limited on the time that that's your restriction. You're, you got time restrictions, so if you got more capital to play with, you can make gains faster. Mm. Right? So, gotcha. are, are, let, me, let me let me try to explain because I've never fucked around with any of this stuff. So, all right, let's just say I walk in with ten grand. I put it into yeah. sushi or whatever, right? And yeah. the, the APY is paid what, like per day, or how 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 much how, how much money am I really making? Let's just say I got in first day, first one it opened. Like, what are we so? About? This is this is based on each each block that is mined. It will release a hundred sushi, and then whatever your percentage is, you get that many sushi. Mm. So you'll see, like, uh, if you click on the uh, let's say sushi ETH pair, you'll have um uh what is it the how much you farmed and then the amount that you staked like your liquidity amount that you stake in percentage so let's say you got five percent liquidity staked in this pool right. and then on this right here it will show how many sushi you farmed and then every every couple seconds if the apy is really high right it'll it'll keep on going up and up and up and then um do you understand that part? So it's not based on like it's not paid out in days, but it's paid out for each block that is mined. So it's super inflationary. Got it. Once it got to like a certain amount of certain number of blocks, um, the number of sushi release went from one hundred to one thousand. Yeah. Gotcha. That's that's also another reason um, why it dumped so quick. Hmm, that makes sense. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting watching these things because like each one, right, has their kind of different tokenomics, um, different, you know, ways that they um, do the, this, um, you know, whole DeFi game. So it's it really does, you have to jump into that specific coin, really get into it. Um, and then, you know, it can change, you know, um, you know, month on month, week on week as well. So it's definitely a high paced game. I think that old man, right, sitting at his computer, he's like, I was, I, I was like, um, Crypto's not stressful or whatever. You know, he's saying the same with same thing with yield farming. He's like, my grandson got me into yield farming, and uh, like, you know, haven't looked back since or something like that. I don't remember what the thing is, but I love those names. But um, um, yeah. And uh, Zotrack says, uh, Coin Market Cap never gave banned their quiz for their uh, quiz like advertise. I'm not exactly sure what you mean there, Zotrack. Um, oh, did, did I, get that? he might mean the Coinbase, the Coinbase Earn quiz okay sometimes when when they add a new token they give you free token by by like learning about the about, like take listen to a two minute video and pick one of the multiple choice answers and you get two dollars of the token or something that's, that's probably okay. that's probably what he's talking about oh i see oh that quiz yeah 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 
uh the quiz oh right it's like an ad form of advertising right um gotcha 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 um yeah any other like um angles on the DeFi space that interest uh maybe hodl or uh wasabi because i haven't heard too much from you guys recently i'm just kind of curious like what angles in the in the DeFi, cfi cdfi whatever we want to call this game um what angles you guys are looking at the, the, like the parallels in these products we're talking about are just ridiculous right we're talking <laughs> one's a one's a get a get rich and it and it what it boils down to is like what is enough right like what you're putting in a hundred dollars like what are you happy to achieve on that dollar those hundred dollars in terms of its percentage right like mm -hmm. those numbers you were throwing out there uh just crazy right they're a get a get rich quick um mm -hmm. or die scheme aren't they and then kind of so like this whole conversation is difficult isn't it because there's so much going on in this space where you have like the triple a accredited like celsius and and whoever else you want to um accredit as well in in the category that are kind of like semi you know just you know sustainable products and you can still earn ridiculous yields let's let's be honest with each other you know 50 percent is achievable on uh mm. and it's and we're doing no work and then you have these these crazy products um as well which are just not going to last um so it's just kind of it's just a difficult you know where do you where do you what, what's your risk appetite what you're trying to achieve um what do you believe in um what's more sustainable it's kind of like i don't know what you why your audience is maybe a blend of all of the above right so um yeah, so I some think one, some risk one. Yeah. yeah yeah the crypto game's a blend of all sorts of people right so there's you got your gamblers you got your degenerate gamblers yeah you got, you got your um people who are you know sophisticated investors got from a to z i think you know and um yeah yeah so i i get what you're saying there yeah so look I, I use Celsius. It, it's the percentages yields are ridiculous at the moment. You're earning sixteen percent on if you earn in sell on a on a stable coin, which is you know probably the least risky product in crypto at the moment. You know, obviously it's pegged to various currencies, and and and, and you can talk about that risk there. But um, and then obviously those you, you're getting paid on a token, which is um, multiplying and compounding and doing everything pretty much available in financial tools all, all at once. So <laughs> you can earn, you can, you can earn a nice, uh, a nice return on that just from a simple US dollar deposit, you know, and that's kind of what I recommend people go with to start with. Obviously this audience is probably a little bit more advanced um, and they can play with Bitcoin and, uh, and different things, but yeah, yeah it's, it is um, any questions you've got, just ask fire away. You know, what does it, what does the audience want to know? Do they want to know how you use Celsius? Do they want to know what's the best, you know rates at the moment the rates are ever changing they change every week um not by too much at the moment do we want to talk about celsius business model or competition you know the space is just so broad it's, it's just crazy you don't even know where to start do you in, in, in yeah. terms of the conversation oh no i, I like by, biting off little bits of interesting mm. chunks of conversation on this show because it's kind of an open forum for both people that are on the panel but also people who are in the chat um, and, and things that they want to know. So I always prioritize the chat. Anybody in the chat wants to know uh, more about Celsius, you know, uh, HODL is like uh, really, really good with all the Celsius knowledge. So if you want to pick his brain, you know, by all means, um, and anybody here on the panel, if you like whichever direction we want to take this and we kind of, maybe we'll spin back to all sorts of different topics. It doesn't matter. Um, it's all good. And I think, um, uh, yeah, we got all sorts of people jumping in here. So Daniel uh, M says, I'm more of a swing trader and hodl type of dude keeping it simple which is good uh simple is uh very nice in my opinion i think that's what is good about sell too right it might feel complicated to people when they first try to start using celsius um right it's like okay how do i kind of get used to this um for some people it might be really easy but um once you're used to it then uh then uh it's like okay you know it's actually a pretty simple tool you don't have to you know you can hodl on there uh, you don't have to trade anything on there and uh, you can earn that interest uh, which is pretty nice and C Jules has a question. I'm curious what the consensus is on what is Cell's closest competition in terms of both sustainability and return. Um, so we mentioned a little bit earlier about you know these ones that are actually losing to Celsius, right? The competition, which is losing. Do you guys see any competition which might give Celsius a run for its money? No. This 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 <laughs> this this changes this changes on the this changes on the monthly. You know, Nexo is one week spamming and doing something and paying a dividend and they're going ahead crazy and then the next week BlockFi have Pompon and they're raising fifty million dollars and then they're 
trying to undercut Celsius and do everything and shit. I just write ridiculous articles. So it literally changes on the daily. Um, I think dollar cost coverage <laughs> covered it well. The answer is just no. There is no, <laughs> there is no uh, competition as far as I see. Our block fire disruptive, absolutely. Do they have a massive army of people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but when you get into the fine print of these things, and look, the fine print of these things is not that difficult compared to like smart contracts, sushi swap, and all this stuff. You know, it's literally the terms and conditions there. You can read them. There's a lot of hidden fees with a lot of these products. The rates, it's kind of teaser rates. The rates are subsidized with a lot of the competition. Um, there's a lot of different um, just angles to where they can kind of like tease you into thinking you're getting something and not getting anything. Celsius is the only one that acts in your interest, gives you 80% of the revenue back, right? Uh, they've been up to 90% of the revenue they are giving you back to the community, not the profit, right? So um, nobody else is doing that. Nobody else is as transparent. Um, can it be more transparent? Yes, it can. There's other initiatives come in. There's proof of community, which is coming soon, which is a, effectively um, you're going to be able to, when you get your interest payment, you're going to be able to use... Um, I think it's zero proof technology that basically you can um, uh, just like sign it digitally if you like and say, okay, I got that interest. That's what I received. And then that will kind of been like authorized on the blockchain. Yeah. So what that's, so what that's going to do is effectively force the competition's hand into, uh -huh. you know, transparency, which none of them are transparent and none of them are, none of them are, a, have a model that's going to scale unless they keep throwing funding money at it. And can they throw funding money at it? Yes, they can for a long time. Uber is a classic example of that, right? So, um, and there's other companies too, right? Um, so at the moment, I put my money there because I believe in what they're doing. I've researched it um, over a number of years. I've been there since the beginning and they've been, they paid out every week. Um, the rates are best in class. The model's best in class. The team's best in class. There's no shilling. There's no advertising. There's no, um, any skullduggery going on. And everybody else is for, and they invented the category. Let's let's not forget that, right? They invented this product. So, and everyone else just piled in and copied it, including CZ and all these others. So, um, yeah, so you just how, have, yeah. you just like to ride whatever is popular these days, and they go, oh, this yeah, is let's do something centralized that that's uh, like that without that's any it, transparency yeah. or open source protocols. So that's that's kind of my like take on how I see the competition. I'd love to hear what everyone else has got to think, but. Are they disruptive? Are they getting in the way? Are they taking um, AUM uh, away from Celsius? Yes, but it's kind of who do you back long term and kind of what's your vision or what's your, uh, what do you want out of this? You know, if you want a long term savings platform with the potential upside of a sell token and different things, then Celsius is a good one. You know, if you just want to get um, the quickest rate on the best rate on the day on some coin, you know, you're kind of missing the point. So, it's kind of yeah. diving into this stuff, understanding like what you're trying to achieve financially and then kind of using these tools, which are amazing. And the first time we've probably had access to these tools, people on this panel um, mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, sustainably save and um, yeah, allocate your digital assets and say and store them. Nice. Uh, I want to kind of hammer on and on that point a little bit here, um, but also kind of give people a little bit of a uh, context to what you just said there, because that was a really, really ton of good information right there. Um, so if people here, um, you know, are new to sell and didn't get some of that, I would say on the replay, definitely go back and listen to what Hoddle just said right there. Listen to it again um, and then look at, uh, you know, proof for that in the market, because I think that transparency, right, is basically a poker game between them and these other players, right? It's like, hey, baby, we're all transparent. Are you guys going to be? And um, they're calling everybody else's bluff, which is really, really cool. It's it's transparency and it's kind of what is the objective of the team right so blockfi went on just blockfi for example they're all 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 similar all the other platforms they went on a podcast recently i think i'll dig it out i'll put i'll timestamp it and they basically asked the blockfi uh, i think pomp was on it as well kind of what is your objectives to mm -hmm. achieve with blockfi number one they openly said this on the podcast was make profit make profit for themselves and for investors they literally said that on the number two was have fun have fun while they are extracting. No, I'm not joking. This is literally what they said. I'll, I'll find it for you. Have fun was number two. So you want to have fun while you're literally like milking your community. 
and just okay. wasting your investors' money. And number three was like, change the world. So, okay, you want to change the world once you've made yourself rich as fuck and then like had a load of fun doing it. And now you're going to change the world, right? So you look at Celsius's model, what they're trying to do, it's the complete opposite. They're trying to um, almost change the, the financial tools that we have now and um, give more back. And it's just kind of like who who has, who has the best... Um, you know ethics and morals in this game and celsius yeah it probably i'm not saying it's a perfect company there's no such thing it's central you know there's an element of centralization there there's an element of centralization in most of these DeFi platforms because they have a fiat on-ramp right so we could debate this all day long but who at the moment is acting in your best interest that's literally all you need to to, to, to look at who do you yep. trust with your money do you trust blockfi like really do you trust them to put like ten thousand dollars on that platform i don't trust them I don't trust they're not going to lock it up and not let me get it back. Like, and I've met a lot of the Celsius team. I've met a lot of the, the community and these guys are not in it for the money. Most of them, most of them won't even talk to me about price. You know, I talk to them and they're just, I'm not interested in price. So mm. that's kind of what I'm seeing. Um, you've all seen what you've seen, which is probably different to what I've seen, but kind of that's where I sit with it all. And I'm happy to go to talk about the block buys and, and the pros and cons because it's not all one way Celsius. There, are, there, there is going to be some competing products and stuff, but uh, that's yeah. how I see it right now. Yeah, and with all these yeah. things that are coming up in the space, it's like, what's the best way to figure out, you know, uh, what's actually going on? Use it, right? Like, uh, put a little mm -hmm. bit of money on it and then see what's happening. And that is for any crypto project, but um, ones that you really want to see, like with staking or with uh, interest or whatever, what are you going to get back from it? You know, put like 50 bucks in it, 100 bucks, whatever, 1,000 bucks, whatever you're willing to lose. And then just test it out and see where it goes and then yeah like you said the results will show you what the intentions are of the uh, uh of that group or whatever and nothing's perfect but um i want you to kind of explain a little bit about your background hodl if you're uh willing to do so um you know getting out of the uh normie world and basically going full-time crypto i just want people to have a little bit of a context to what you're saying because you're living it man you're like you're living it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't get that yeah, I live it. So I'm basically, I was blue collar worker when I came out of school. I kind of, I don't know what you call it in America, kind of college. I, I didn't um, finish college, not because of lack of ability, just didn't really want to be there. Found money early, uh, started in very little money and thought that was a lot of money. Ended up in the, long story short, ended up in the military, British military, doing um, tactical communications and um, satellite communications radio communications did tours of afghanistan all the usual stuff then i got into the uh i came out in 2007 i think it was and then i basically entered the oil and gas arena for satellite communications and i kind of been working there ever since started as an engineer worked my way all the way up and then i ended up spending eight years in the middle east um looking after a lot of major oil and gas clients, kind of um, all the cruise liners, we, um, maritime government clients, all sorts in the end. So I ended up kind of running a, quite a big region, uh, Middle East and North Africa. I looked after, spent a lot of time in all these countries and different things as well. And then just got corporate burnout, fed up of it, fed up of the pyramid scheme. Um, I earned decent, you know, a decent salary and stuff out of it. It was It was really good for corporate education. I think it's really helped me kind of trying to understand these space and kind of how these companies are, are built out and, and what's right and what's going to scale. Um, yeah. And then kind of 2017, I got into crypto, um, didn't get burned at the top, kind of got burned in the middle quite a lot um, <laughs> and just basically found Celsius right at the beginning um, and then just, yeah, stuck with it um, all, all the way through kind of just trying to work out kind of what was going on to start with because it was very new and it hadn't been done before and it was kind of first in class um trying to understand kind of you know the model and kind of and i've just watched it very very closely over the years i'm not one of these people that's kind of like jump on the like the xrp bandwagon and i'm never going to come off it i'm kind of looking what i'm looking for is kind of um the flaws in it i'm looking for the like 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 uh, dollar cost does the fundamental analysis i'm kind of live there but i've kind of more like snipered into one or two projects where i kind of like live in those projects whereas you're doing it kind of on a broader space a lot of different projects and i can't i can't even do one or two properly so i don't know how you're doing you managing <laughs> you, you must never sleep right so yeah i, I spent that time a lot no it's not easy um but did i but to, to get there that's not what i did you know obviously i went down different rabbit holes with different projects um 
a lot of the decentralized uh, exchange protocols in the beginning and just watching them kind of how they um how that market panned out but i think we're kind of some winners are coming up from that um that space at the moment um and then that's that's kind of maturing out so yeah i've been in celsius just watching it and um just learning and basically meeting and so, so i left corporate in uh my last job was in uh, doha then i left in february and then the pandemic came and i was just gonna travel for a bit and i basically just been glued to my laptop um the last couple of years and i kind of just live this like you guys do um i don't really have like revenue streams or anything like that i just kind of live in the the investments world really i love it i love it it's, really, it's, fair, it's basically fair to say that you live on crypto yeah i do basically yeah, yeah. so and, and celsius being a big portion of that or maybe the yeah well the that's thing. the thing right celsius kind of was one of the one of the um light bulb moments for me where like you could kind of look, do, do I earn enough to retire? Now, I think, no, I don't, but it, it, you can earn a significant amount of money off Celsius by um, um, someone living in Doha there. The, yeah. Um, yeah, so it, Doha sucks. <laughs> <laughs> devise, devise the one, devise the one. Like, that was good fun, that was good fun. Um, yeah, so the whole time I was in Dubai, there was, I couldn't really find the communities for this stuff because Celsius hadn't matured enough. So I basically sat for two years um, knowing about Celsius, but I couldn't recommend it. I'm very, I wouldn't come on this stream if I didn't kind of like what you guys are doing. Um, I've kind of watched quite a lot of the streams and I'm kind of very cautious, right? I don't want to recommend anything that I, it just wasn't mature enough. Mm. And I couldn't tell any of my friends or anything because I just didn't want anyone to get burned uh, because okay. you have to kind of know how to get yourself out of these things, right? Once you're in. So I'm very confident now I've kind of, um went on the dollar cost podcast um i'm very confident what i'm seeing um the growth the metrics that's kind of where i live all day long in those numbers kind of watching kind of waiting for that cross the chasm moment i'm kind of looking at the the space seeing what is it going to take us to get that like next million users um i don't have all the answers but you kind of it's just an exciting time right to watch this grow and to use these products and to find people like you and to like educate people on these products and say get a hundred dollars a thousand dollars and earn 15 percent on it like that's just a gift i'm basically trying to give to everyone right now that's what i'm trying to do appreciate that man i appreciate you coming on and, and spending the time and, and everybody that's maybe jumping on the stream in the middle here it's the 3 a.m for huddle here in the middle <laughs> of the street he's living the crypto life crypto never yeah. sleeps um he's living on crypto living the dream to be honest that's great like um you know it's one of these things i get a lot of people asking me is like is it possible to you know live on crypto and it's like it might not be the most convenient thing in the world but they you know where there's a will there's a way and um yeah it, that's you know something that is uh, really cool and so we have a few questions in here i'm going to pepper you with them um the first one which i just want to say we were talking about there's a uh, you know accredited investors or uh, smart investors and then we got the degenerates as well um harry butthole surprise surprise i am a degenerate <laughs> i am shocked <laughs> surprise surprise <laughs> <laughs> but um oh, i love that name it's so funny but um our back simpson right next one here marcus 99 says can sell last longer than 10 years um maybe we'll blaze through some of these questions because i'm sure a lot of these we could probably talk for like hours and hours on i'm sure 10 years 10 years is just the beginning Look, will it last? I can't answer that question, but if this space matures in the way without getting a government slap in the face, which I don't think it is because I've seen a lot of lot of signs that suggest that they all want to get in and the rich people want to make a lot of money first, uh, which is positive, right? That's just how the world is and how it has to be. I think it's going to be in 10 years. That's my opinion. Cool, yeah. cool. Uh, what's the best way to use sell? Just hodl it and just get the gains man at the moment <laughs> just huddle use it as uh use it as so you can basically earn an interest on top of your normal um allocation so let's say us dollar coin if you earn you can earn 11 percent, 11.5 in us dollar coin uh, per year if you take the sell bonus you're earning effectively almost 16 percent. so you're earning that extra percentage and then um you're stacking that sell and then the sell is compounding at the same time so 
you're basically earning 16% interest. And then it's like, what did it multiply last week? It went up like 60%, right? So mm. I think we're just in the beginning. And I think sell $1 at the end of the year is reasonable. Um, other yeah. people will have other opinions on here. And I hope 20, they're right and wrong. 20 bucks, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hope I'm wrong. Um, but I think next, I think by the end of 20, yeah. I really do. End of, end of, end of 2021, or I think $3. And I think we go just keep going up, right? So. It's speculation on the sell token. It does have uses. It has a lot of. I could do a whole episode on sell token, but oh, for sure, you can send it around uh, for via sell pay. There's a lot. You can pay off your interest if you take a loan. You can um, reduce your interest by paying in sell. There's many utilities, and um, but yeah, the best. Right. Way, well, I guess most of your audience kind of it just earn that. The, the easiest way is just to earn that extra interest and kind of stack it. Well, yeah. I don't know what you guys right. are doing. You, you, Wasabi, what are you doing with yours? Um, I just collect interest on it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's great, which is great. That's, I mean, that's what, that's what we all want. We all want passive income yep. and it, it's, it's super simple. Like it, it does exactly what it claims to do. Um, it doesn't overcomplicate anything. You store the amount that you have on the, on the Celsius app and you collect, um, you collect interest on it and it averages out to over, uh, somewhere between five to 6% uh, per year. Um, after you count in all the compounding. So that to me is the, I kind of look at that as like the golden, the golden goose in a sense. Like there's just really no reason to, to, I I mean, just to, to, to really completely sell out of like a position for something like that. The, uh, as Hoddle mentioned, the company is so transparent. It's really, from my view, it's, it's really redefines how a business startup should be run in terms of like the transparency, especially in the crypto market. We've never had anything like this before ever until Celsius network. And you, they have videos uh, almost every day uh, posted on YouTube with live AMAs where you, you get mm -hmm. to meet the team members. Um, and that's really what's, what it's going to take to build. Cause the whole point of crypto is it's, it's an, it's an alternate financial um, system really f that's globally any anybody can use, but uh, trust takes an extremely long time to build. And I think what we've seen it with a lot of these uh, major exchanges. Uh, no offense to you know Coinbase or Binance, where they they basically list tokens and then dump on their on their clients because that's that's yeah. exactly what they're doing. Well, I mean, you don't have to you don't have to try to uh, not offend. Um, yeah. You know somewhat criminal actions in that case. I mean, you could, you can kind of classify it in right. a certain way, but um, it's just definitely not moral for sure. Yeah. So it's, 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 um, and that's, that's really hurt uh, my, from my view, that's really hurt cryptocurrency in terms of the, the trust aspect of, of bringing new users um, into the, into the crypto space. And Celsius to me is the first real attempt to uh, take an alternate path that can actually build trust and sustain that over a very long period of time. And that, and that for me is, uh, in terms of like for an investment, it's a no brainer to me because, um, for me to trust a project, it's, it takes a lot. Like I, I do not, uh, take that lightly. I'm, I'm not, I'm more of a risk averse investor in this space. Like I have to put money into like either established projects, um, something that's proven. And, um, early on, I, I saw the potential with that with, uh, Celsius and, um, to this day, like I am still super grateful. I remember when uh, uh, Dollar Cost first told me about Celsius, because otherwise, I, I maybe I, I would have never known about it. Um, mm -hmm. Like it, it to me, it, the Again, light bulb went not, off. Not financial yeah. advice, just opinions, guys. Here, yeah, not, so not financial on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, not not financial advice, um, but uh, Celsius is one that I will be uh, invested in most definitely for however long this market cycle goes on for. Hmm. We, we we talked a lot at the start about kind yeah. of like where to take um but what 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 this where to take profits where we see the top the moon right mm -hmm. but what celsius does is and dollar cost has covered covered this quite a lot on his podcast it basically this is the first time in a market the crypto market where we've basically had a reason not to leave crypto right because you're basically effectively giving up your celsius status you're giving up your gains that you could potentially make okay if it's going to drop in the, in the bear market whatever you're giving up your yields you're giving up your position basically so 
what Celsius is going to do, it's going to kind of, I think, maybe not this cycle, the next cycle, it's going to solidify, especially people like me. I, it's not just a kind of 2x and a 3x and then you're out. It's kind of a yielding product which you can build and work on. And I think that's what Wasabi and other people are doing. I kind of build this portfolio and it can basically yield and work for you to, to kind of release you from being able to um have to go to work every day so that's an opportunity that was never there before because there was no trust and that's something that wasn't there in the last um market right so that's i think that's a big uh i don't know if it's going to be enough of a hold this time um i hope it is um but i i will definitely think twice well i'm not I'm, my view is to never kind of sell the position even though that sounds mm. crazy right because i lose my yielding potential especially when it's gaining such a um there's such an upside here at the same time so that's just kind of my my where I'm at with it. And then a rhetorical question before I move on to some other questions. When hex listing on sell, that would be interesting. <laughs> That'd be an interesting mix. Um, rhetorical question. And I'm just leaving it out there. I know that's a huge subject. Um, let's let's go to the next question here. Uh, Harry, I'm gonna start calling this guy Harry just because you know it's a little bit easier for me and uh, you know people could see. It. Uh, do you recommend holding Celsius on the Celsius app or on a different app? On the app and earn five percent and it compounds it's a no-brainer definitely and you also mentioned we could do a whole episode on celsius we probably will do that at some point but before that i would like um hodl uh, you and maybe any other celsians that are willing to join um to jump into the crypto mindset webinars that will be have live uh for two weeks from september 18th to october 2nd um if you have any free time within that space um we would love to have you in there and explain it to these guys because um you know, dollar cost crypto knows uh, really good detail wasabi as well about you know how to gain interest on there how to play the long game with that token uh, as you know and you have all the other good details on that as well so i want you know really put the numbers in front of people and be like hey here's the numbers here's the data and if you do this this and this you know if you're let's say you're in a situation where you can only put let's say 500 or a thousand dollars in it or you're a person who could put let's say thirty thousand dollars in it whatever whatever situation you're in Here's the math and what you can do. I really want to go into depth about this to help people out because it's a little bit, you know, first thinking about it, looking at it, first of all, crypto, right, is complex for some people who are new. And then second of all, starting to try to gain interest on this and all that stuff for a lot of people, it's all, you know, can be overwhelming. So uh, really just kind of slowing down, giving the numbers that thing. I, I want to um, do that if you're up for it. Sure. Yeah, be cool. Next one here. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, Danny says, look at the investment returns. And he also says, uh, competition for sell. Uh, what about Hotbit? We didn't address, I guess, that as possible competition. I don't know much about them, to be honest. I've never heard of them. I don't know anything about them, so they're not competition. But maybe they're doing <laughs> something cool. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll have a look. No worries. Let's see what else we got going here. All right, Paul says that exactly. Celsius says no main competition. The competition has to be able to give more than 80% of their revenue to be competitive with Celsius. And we're mentioning, right, we haven't seen anything like this before um, with crypto. And uh, you know, we used to have things that attempted to do this, like um, the salt coin, right, which um, basically was pretty much a scam <laughs> back in 2017. Uh, and uh, right, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that was funny. I remember when that was Celsius's main competition. So I'm sorry <laughs> to cut you off. Like I just remember no, no, no. Alex. Like Alex used to talk about it all the time. He's just like, yeah, salt this and that. And they used to charge like 25 percent, 30 percent interest mm -hmm. on loan. I think it was. And then Celsius came out with like a one percent loan. And then yes. just like, what are you what are you doing? Why are you charging 30 percent? It was just ridiculous. Are they finished now, Sol? I think they're gone, aren't they? Yeah, they're dead. They're dead yeah. in the water, um, which happens to a lot of these things. Um, so that's why I really think Celsius is really cool, because I think um, kind of like all-time highs was saying there, everybody wants passive uh, crypto, right? And right. it's something that's been attempted many, many times. Um, there's very few uh, platforms that have made this uh, regular. And, and we'll, I mean, throughout the next bear market, we'll see which ones survive. There, there's a handful of them that, you know, are legit and they survive the bear markets and they don't have to rely on, you know, consistent, uh, constant funding, um, that I think, you know, that's a really good thing for the market to have multiple choices. Um, but yeah, at, at this moment in time, right. Celsius is the one that's winning this. Yeah. Market. I think, I think blending it with kind of what you teach Charlie is kind of like you're making gains and then using those mm -hmm. gains to kind of accrue more interest is kind of the yes. model, right? Like, I think I don't play too much. I've, I've it, just day trading or, um, you know, trading too much doesn't really suit my, personality because i just get obsessed with it and i can't sleep and i just yeah. turn myself inside out so i can't i want to do it i just can't do it because it just mm. ruins me but i've kind of found the model where you can kind of make those you know 
longer term swings and then just make that um make that work for you in the celsius app so look i'm not telling everybody to put everything on celsius you manage your own risk and and split the portfolio use use a couple of these platforms if you want to split them out that way but i'm just talking about what i what i think is is the best platform and everyone's you know entitled to their own opinion oh for sure just you know opinion not financial advice so, yeah <laughs> see charles charles in here says good news i just pulled 100k loan out at three percent on the cell baby moon moon it moon it i love it uh <laughs> paul says whale <laughs> uh i just bought cell when you said that you know yeah we got we do have to be careful what we say here right of course yeah. people are you know people are listening man um taking out that 100k loan <laughs> yeah. up 200 i'm pretty sure yeah chat investment model um quick actual question uh do they have a cash out to fiat system um no go go for it you can answer that one yeah they, they so what alex says is alex doesn't want you to spend your crypto right because it's supposed to be for long-term gains right you're earning more you're earning bitcoin on bitcoin sell on sell and it's you're supposed to accrue income that way obviously you can take your bitcoin off the off the um off the app and then sell it into fiat right but they're not going to make it easy for you to try to go into fiat and spend it as well they do have sell pay but they're they're really kind of dragging their feet on there because what would be, people people have been asking for like a debit card from celsius hmm. and Celsius doesn't really want to do it because what ends up happening is that we want hodlers we don't want spenders yeah, we want people liquidity from the platform yeah well that as well too yeah of, of course is that well too but then you know, yeah. once you get really used to just swiping the card on stuff i mean it's gonna uh, i mean eventually i think they will add it and obviously like if, if i'm earning you know you know fifty thousand dollars a year in interest and stuff yeah, it would, it'd be kind of cool to be able to spend a card, but we're not there yet, obviously. And then you want to accrue that much assets where you could earn that interest passively per year. Yeah, you don't have to have a full, fully functioning with everything that everybody wants, right? The the main goal at the beginning, right, is to um, support uh, the current system and have that main function of gaining interest, right? And if you want, you know, to keep liquidity in the system, um, then having, you know, those kind of checks and balances to make sure that it stays that way is really good. Um, for when a project like this is just forming because it keeps it healthy right and it keeps the focus on what's its main purpose and then you know in the future once it you know becomes basically a you know a much bigger animal then you know it has the um in my opinion might have the uh luxury of being able to do that but at the moment right i can see why it would be incentivized not to do so which is not you know, it's good to be honest about that it's not a terrible thing but it's um something that with time Right, um, and the bigger that they get, then the more uh, convenience um, they can add on to uh, the different services. But there know, is uh, there is a coin coin yeah. um, swap coming. So um, uh, coin yeah. swap in uh, coin swap in app is coming. Oh, um, I'll probably say within let's say three four months. I'd say end, let's say end of year coin swap in app, and then so the best way to answer that question is you can just swap it to USDC, and then you're basically in the field, yeah, yeah. aren't you? So yep. it's coming. Every look, everything is coming, right? So what does it take? It takes the licenses, it takes the regulation, it takes the product team, it takes the amount of staff. So everything that you want is coming. It just takes time to build the product properly and to be licensed and regulated to do these things properly. So that's a great that's something that's kind of needed, isn't it? Especially if you've got something like XRP or whatever you don't want and then you want to swap it to sell, you can do that in the app. That would be amazing. Functionally. I don't know if they're gonna use Uniswap or something for that um they've kind of hinted at that i don't i don't really know i don't have the inside scoop but i'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll try and get more about it but it's coming so, yeah. i says uh cell will suck up market cap top 20 crypto like uh what uh cell did in the cell saga yeah i don't get the last part i don't know what he's talking about there but <laughs> android 18 and 19 <laughs> from, from uh, dragon ball z <laughs> uh, okay okay yeah i'm not i i know the characters but i'm not up on the dragon ball z uh uh lore so uh but i love it i love it love that you guys get that stuff so um any any kind of final thoughts either with DeFi, celsius anything with this or any questions anybody had for anybody else on the panel or uh, i i think we should do when liquidity and dollar cost should answer it because he has theories <laughs> on what's coming next and there we go because that is one pain point the liquidity is low um that's also an opportunity not financial advice to you know take advantage of the barrier to entry um mm -hmm. having to move around yeah. a couple of exchanges which to us is not a barrier to entry because it's what we do every day but it's you know you're trying to unroll your best friend who doesn't know anything about crypto it's you have to go through a few hoops right so 
when liquidity is the question the next one i, I think right. the last Let's question yeah right. there's there's gonna be a lot of exchanges added pretty soon i i mean i think so i mean they've also hinted at it i mean but this is this is just right here full speculation but it's probably um it's probably binance and um uh, who's the parent? Uh, who's the parent company exchange to Tether? Is it Bitmex? Uh, no, Bit, Bit, Bitfinex. Bitfinex, yeah. Bitfinex, Bitfinex. Yeah, in Bitfinex. I, I'm more surprised. I wouldn't. Be, I'd be more surprised. Bitfinex is probably going to be the first ad, and then if not, if not Binance, just because of how many tokens Celsius is adding to the app as well, mm. and then all this little, the string sort of of like, of a of CZ sort of talking about CFI a lot. Right, mm -hmm. so it's sort of like, yeah. I, I mean, I think that's what's kind of going on is that the, they're going to make a ladder move towards this way because uh, the D DeFi is, is. I really like DeFi, but at a certain point, you do have to you do have to go into the real world, mm -hmm. and that's the only thing that DeFi is kind of missing is because, of course, they're always going to gatekeep it. Like the reason Celsius is wasting so much money and time being doing everything by the book is because the rest, everyone else is cheating, mm -hmm. literally, like. BlockFi yep. and all the other platforms, they are not doing things, but they're giving loans to people in states they should not be giving people loans to. So they're eventually, this is some big regulatory thing that's going to get a lot of these companies into big trouble. And Celsius is the most squeakiest shirt out here. Mm -hmm. They're really following the rules. Obviously, there's could be a couple, there could be a couple bad actors and people just you know faking stuff. That's but that's that's everywhere. But but obviously, these the one of the reasons, one of the only competitive advantages that um, Nexo and BlockFi and Coin, uh, uh, what's it called a, uh, what's that coin called? Whatever the um, crypto.com. Crypto.com. Yeah, yeah crypto.com. Have over Celsius is pretty much that um, they're they're giving loans to anybody, right? Which is That's it's cool. not sustainable. Yeah, it's not sustainable, but it's not just that. It's just like eventually they're going to get in trouble as, as regulation comes in. It, yep. It's really good right now to grow like that, right? That's how DeFi is growing so quick, and which is good. But eventually when the, when the fucking ban hammer comes in from the government, um, dude, it's not going to be good. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Money I remember people. Alex saying like right at the beginning of Celsius, they didn't list the sell token anywhere for like more than a year. And I remember him saying right at the beginning, he was just like, we're all nails, and I don't want to be the one that's sticking out. He was like, that's why we're going to do everything by the book. We're going to be, you know, we're all potentially can get hit on the head, but just don't be the one that sticks out. And it's true, right? Like if you're giving loans out and you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, it's going to come to an end one way or another. Look, there's going to be people like BlockFi and others that probably get away with it to a certain extent just because people just do. But there's going to be some that just get taken out, I think, uh, totally, the, the low-hanging fruit. Mm. Um, with the Binance thing, all, everything – all my logic tells me that is never going to happen because Alex has basically for the last three years just called out exchanges and just said, you're bad actors, the practice <laughs> they do, the wash trade in the front running. Um, and he wants basically to um, any exchange to sign a waiver to say, you're not going to do that against our customers. So mm. all the logic tells me no, but all the crumbs are kind of <laughs> there on the floor at the moment. So this is and and i've kind of learned over the years that when there's crumbs they're there for a reason right so mm -hmm. that's but so I, I i don't know i don't know if it's a good thing either if we go on binance we start to play a different game right because this token is not trading like any other token when it, when bitcoin dumped 20 percent, it didn't move when ethereum dumped whatever it didn't move and it pumped straight away after because it's literally trading on its own with no in a no liquidity pool, right? Basically, there's just more buy pressure than sell pressure right now, and they have to keep buying back tokens to pay interest. So once we go on these exchanges, the game changes, right? Now we're getting front ran. Now we're getting shorted. Now we're getting yeah. all the other things. So yeah, I don't know what I want to wish for here. Obviously, the price increases by two x probably. No financial advice. As soon as it goes on Binance, probably more. It just rockets, right? But is that good? I don't know. Like that's a, that's another topic, right? But that, that's my thoughts on kind of how I see it. But there is a lot of crumbs on the floor for Binance. Why why is the BNB token in the app coming soon? You know, why is C CZ saying those sort of things? I don't know. I could be completely wrong and look silly, but I don't know. There's breadcrumbs on the floor. That that yeah. that's all I'll say. And then in terms of exchanges, Bitfinex is definitely coming in because they're partnered with Tether. Tether invested ten million dollars into Celsius. Um, 
I think one of the other exchanges is going to be uh, BitMax, which is the American version, isn't it, of the Line partnership. There's Bitfront and BitMax. Um, Bitfront they've already partnered with, and maybe Liquid. Um, but as well, they don't want to just do traditional listings. The point of the the Celsius listings is they're kind of putting the lending engine of Celsius in the back end of the exchange. So when so now this exchange can learn uh, can um, offer these services to its customers, and then when you're deposit into the the lending service, you effectively deposit into Celsius. That's kind of how I see it, right? So everything Celsius is doing is not what everybody else is doing. It takes longer. It's more regulation, but the end result is we in two years we come back here. And there's just money flowing into Celsius constantly and probably flowing out of everywhere else. So it's a long game. It's not a get rich, um, a sushi farm. <laughs> Which is That's really, really good. And yeah. I think, you yeah. know, a lot of people, they, they term, they're like in crypto, people are binary. So I think it's good that CZ is starting to talk about CDFI, right? C, uh, CFI, DeFi mix, um, because there's a lot of people that are like a binary, right? This is either CFI because it's somewhat centralized or it's DeFi because it's totally decentralized. In my opinion, I think there is the mix and there is the bridge between what's the real world and what's the crypto world. Um, and I think you know Celsius has a really good bridge, uh, a really good mix there. So I wouldn't even term it as totally CFI. I'd say CDFI is kind of a good little uh, new term to put on, it, even though it's not like the kind of it's a little bit clunky, but it is what it is. Um, any final thoughts um, uh, for Wasabi Crypto or Dollar Cost or uh, Voice My Vision? Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You go. So, yeah, so for the, I, I guess even for the term DeFi, nothing in DeFi is actually, well, except maybe a few projects, um, the, the large majority, like 99% of the projects are not actually decentralized. Um, mm -hmm. The reason being the smart contracts, the developers hold the key to the smart contracts. So that's a form of centralization that um, already contradicts the whole um, DeFi statement. I don't think that necessarily um, is like a like a showstopper for like the whole DeFi space or anything. I, I just think of DeFi as more of a buzzword that's not actually true in statements. Um, it's yeah. actually centralized finance, but it, it's relative. It's relatively open. I just think of it more as open finance instead of uh, decentralized finance. Um, but uh, yeah, so for something like Celsius, there's, um, you know, the, you're, you're, uh, it's, a, it's custodial, but um, if you look at DeFi projects, you know, they have their own form of centralization as well. So each of them has their own trade-off. Um, so that, that is another thing you, you do have to consider, I guess, you know, depending on what projects you're um, investing in. Uh, and then aside from the, the DeFi side of things, in terms of the exchange listings, the one, uh, so what Hado was mentioning mentioned as far as like shorts and all that, um, that is absolutely true. Once you get listed on mainstream exchanges, that's part of the, that's kind of part of the battle. And it's highly likely that a lot of decentralized exchanges also operate on a fractional reserve system that um, tends to, to basically do supply dilution because um, anybody that's storing coins on the exchange, um, it kind of goes into that whole fractional reserve uh, system, so to say. But at the same time, like with a lot of um, new token listings, this is something I'm actually observing right now with uh, specifically DOT and Kusama is uh, since the coins are relatively new, the order books are extremely thin. Um, so what's probably happening too is once the shorts pile up on the exchange, the exchange is basically annihilating those shorts <laughs> and then basically pumping the price up. So uh, it'll definitely work in both directions. Um, I, I almost think of the, the 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 negatives, at least for major exchange listings. It's I think that becomes more apparent, like the more cycles like an asset lasts. So something like Bitcoin that's been around for a longer um, there's more fractional reserve going on for like something like Bitcoin versus something like Celsius that's trading on. Uh, decentralized exchanges right now so um, that's definitely a factor in terms of the like the long-term growth of it which isn't really an issue now but um, that's something I do like to think about as well um, yeah. over the course of time and I like everybody has like a slightly different angle to take on what they think is DeFi 
um, because there's all sorts of interesting things. Our friend Ken here jumping in saying Bitcoin is DeFi. <clears throat> yes, definitely. The OG for uh, blockchain DeFi, all the jazz that runs the crypto space. Um, so I love it. And uh, Paul also says that uh, the privacy aspect versus the, um, you know, giving the government all of your uh, info, right? DeFi is no KYC or AML and uh, DeFi is KYC AML. Um, that's, a, you know, it's a very easy way to uh, define it there as well. So um, there's also one, one easy way to define it as well. Does it have a fear on and off ramp? Mm -hmm. If it has a fear on and off ramp, it's not DeFi. So a lot of these are adding a fear on ramp. So how is it DeFi? So you'll find that like whoever, Ken's probably right. Bitcoin is, is a DeFi as it's going to get. Pretty yeah. much everything isn't. Let's just, you know, you could argue oh, all day sure. long, right? There's just one that's probably properly centralized, decentralized, but you can argue that with the mining and, and everything else. But most of them are CeFi in a way. Yeah. Um, and so you kind of, yeah. And that's okay. It's like, there's so many people here that are hung yeah. up in crypto of like, you know, we have to have a utopia and it's like, that's not how the world works. We want to get there. We want to do our best to get there for sure. Um, but, you know, we got to got to roll with punches and understand what, uh, you know, how people actually uh, react to things. And um, yeah, just uh, do a little bit of dose of reality there. Um, uh, Jacob, what are you what are your thoughts? Yeah, I was thinking um, the same thing where Harold was saying, like, all these, if you look at like the coming soon coins on uh, Celsius app, and then they also have, what is it, uh, Binance coin? Or they have BNB, and then they also have Band protocol in the coming soon, and then they have uh, BUSD already listed for mm -hmm. like being able to gain interest. Like it would, it would make sense if Binance does list it um, or is one of the first ones to list it, you know, on mm -hmm. as a major exchange. And then another thing I was wondering is like, um, if Celsius lasts like let's say a decade or plus, or it becomes one of the mainstream platforms to for people to hodl their coins and gain interest on, will will Celsius be like one of those um, companies that gets like the the Celsius effect, like you know, like the Coinbase effect, where all these coins want to be mm -hmm. listed on. Celsius, I think so. If they do, you listen on Celsius, they get a major pump. Very good point. Yeah. So that's that's one angle to look at, but that's again a crypto only angle, right? Like I've no no dollar cost has coverage it covered it a couple of times. It's just the beginning, right? And I think you'll see. You're right. It will become the Celsius effect, and it will become lots of listings per day. We got up to over a thousand per day. Uh, lots of signups per day. We got like fifteen hundred or something per day. It was. Once the line partnership was uh, announced recently, that was a couple of weeks ago. We haven't even touched on that. Once the line like services and the Libra services and all of these other, um, you know, you can kind of see how this is all fleshing out. Um, all of that comes to fruition. You know, that will need what Celsius is right to summarize. It's basically a digital asset uh, management platform. Not just don't think just crypto. Think about digital assets. Right. So what is going to be a digital asset in the future? Pretty much a lot of things right yeah. so and where is all that going to go where where is it centralized digital currencies central um digitized real estate digitized whatever you want right uh, you can say it's never going to come or it will come something will get digitized and put on this platform a lot of things yeah. all at once and they'll need so who is going to be the front running player who is going to be the best in class actor who is going to have the most polished services who's going to have the best customer experience and who is going to pay um everybody in their best interests there's only one game in town so yeah you're right voice my ambition that they, they there will be a flood and then there'll be a flood from somewhere else and there'll be a flood from somewhere else but this doesn't just happen tomorrow it's kind of like a long-term play right so the crypto is just one element to look at just look at the line partnership right what they're trying to do i'll post a link in the um in the comments um yeah. just look and you yeah uh with the line partnership i'm also wondering if um that was easier because they had they already had previously um, been listed on Liquid, which uh, is like fully regulated in Japan. You know, who was um, who was listed in, on Liquid? Sorry. Oh, cell cells already listed on uh, Liquid. Uh, so Liquid, I wonder yeah. if that made it uh, easier to get that line partnership in Japan. Potentially, I've not really spoke to any of the team about kind of how the mechanics of that kind of came off but 
the thing for me is just kind of the lines vision look that i've just posted it there in the private chat so you can basically send it. i can't send it into the the comments because oh, i'm not signed up so yeah you just share that one um basically yeah they're building a, a tech um goliath if you like basically like a facebook and trying to compete on the asia side Maybe. um with all these digital currencies digital payments peer-to-peer -peer, it'll be crazy right so oh, i can't man, i can't answer that, that. Makes, yeah that news right there made me so effing bullish i was yeah. like bro people don't even know because most no. people don't know the japan market right and like just to kind of let people know right they're yeah. talking about this company named line which is basically like the whatsapp of japan everybody my wife's parents right both of them uh in their 50s and 60s right they everybody has line um you go to a bar you know you want to get a girl's number what's your line qr code scan it boom um there you go so um you know celsius being able to be the only uh interest bearing application for crypto in japan having a malt monopoly on the entire market that's bullish um and yeah japanese companies i think are going to come after that and be like oh man that's a big money maker um, but Celsius has like, you know, how many, um, you know, steps ahead of that already, you know, they're going to be a lot of copycats, but, um, they're not going to have the same success. Even the, in this, the, this news was not covered properly anywhere. And it's just kind of being swept under the carpet because what does it mean today? It means a couple of thousand. Oh, you like that. Blood of cattle and Celsius effectively being inside the line app potentially without you know there's going to be peer-to-peer -peer payment like wechat i think i think you can do that i'm not an expert on asia but i think you can send transactions mm -hmm. to each other now on the messaging app right so that's going to come and then you're going to be able to earn interest on your assets the build-in exchanges like you can just see how this infrastructure has been built and they're going to try and take over some sort of like um banking services on because they have all the users they have all the technology they have everything all they need to do is just kind of like put a, a wrapper over the top of your WhatsApps and your lines and all of this stuff. And then you'll basically be able to, Celsius is going to be the interest bearing um, platform. So it's just ridiculous. Like the potential oh. of this stuff. This, this is one, right? This is one yeah. partnership. Like this is one, they're not, this is not the end game, right? There's going to be no. loads of these over China, the next, next two years. Next yeah. market, China, next market, Russia. Yeah. Next and market. this is, and this is now, right? This is happening now. This is not like, oh, it might be, or uh, <laughs> XRP of, um, partner with a bank and they might do something in 10 years like this is happening like yeah, right. literally well and, and i have line on my phone here right like i'm like i got my line going i got everybody you know my connection there i'm like can't wait till this is out and rolling uh positively online so that i can use it here in japan me and jacob uh right both being able to like just earn interest on our phones um with not just the celsius app but with line as well and like just making it more and more convenient for people is amazing um yeah. paul says uh line partnership was an undertaking line when uh went through uh celsius books to verify them uh good right. good good and <laughs> i i used to you know be a recruiter here in japan helping companies come into the japan market and here's how most companies come into the japan market they rock up and they're like yeah i'm an american company or yeah i'm a european company we got some you know uh great products we have a shit ton of money and yeah we're just going to come into this market and we're going to not change one thing um even though the culture of japan is completely different than any other country and um yeah we're just going to keep doing the same game assume that japanese people are going to buy it and um yeah because we have a lot of money we can bankroll this to stay in the market for a few years and we're going to you know snuff out some japanese competition that's not how the japan market works you get uh huge companies coming in here like gap just as one example yeah they stay for some time but then if they don't play the game with uh the japanese companies they go bust and um you know you get taco bell right, comes into Japan, gets lines around the corners uh, for the first three months, and then they struggle to have people come in the shop after that. Um, so these companies, which are not able to understand the market and don't have partnerships properly within the market, uh, can come in and come out of the market real quick. And my, um, you know, inkling here is that them going and partnering with a company like Line, this is more similar to how a company like Indeed uh, or a company like Costco entered the Japan market, which is um, indeed specifically partnered with uh, the biggest recruitment company in Tokyo. I may or may not have worked for them called Recruit. Um, and that company right, bought uh, the rights to Indeed for Japan and then said, hey, we know our market, we're gonna run it for you. And uh, now Indeed is you know, partially owned by that company in Japan and they're doing very, very well. And then on top of that, we have Costco, right? Which is a super smart company in terms of how they run business. Um, they came into Japan, what they did was um, they got 
all these OG, um, you know, guys with a lot of money in Japan and said, hey, how do we come into your market? We're not going to disrupt too much. We're going to be, you know, friends with you guys and, um, you know, we're going to make it work. And um, those companies succeeded. I have a, an inkling that this is what Celsius did because they are partnering with the Japanese. Well, Lion's technically a Korean uh, company with Naver as their head. But anyways, um, with, you know, the Japan head office, they're partnering here. They're not coming in and being like, um, you know, we're going to rule your market because we're so awesome. It's like, come in a little bit humble, um, learn what the market is like, and then, you know, uh, go in that way. And I think that's really what um, makes uh, companies that come into this market su successful. And I think Celsius, if they're doing that in Japan market, they'll probably do that in other markets like China and, and other areas. So that's uh, massive as well. So yeah, this news was not covered properly. It made, I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, holy crap, you know, this is great. Um, and no country left out. No, yeah. no, no these companies want to be feel like they're going to get taken out of business. So they're like, yeah, let's partner up. And I still get to keep my place at the top. Yep. That's, that's exactly. what else is telling people. I mean, it's, it's just ingenious. It's ingenious. Yeah. And I want to apologize to Swerve here. We don't, I mean, we do have time, but I'm not going to go into H bar too much here today. Appreciate your question. Appreciate you uh, watching the stream and, and put it in there. I mean, unless anybody here knows a lot about, uh, HBAR, I've seen it. I, to be honest, I haven't done enough research to have an, uh, an opinion on it at this point in time, except for that uh, sometimes the chart looks decent. But um, if anybody wants to answer this question, you can feel free. But if not, then um, we can we can go into final thoughts from dollar cost um, here. Anybody know about it? I don't really know too much. Not I know too much. Okay, yeah. Another time. We'll look into it, sort of yeah. come back on the stream. Oh. Oh, maybe Wasabi knows. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I remember I briefly looked into HBAR uh quite a while ago um what made me it looks like an interest I, I i do know the project uses um i believe it's using dag it's, mm. it's so it's, it's yeah. using it's using dag i think it's similar technology to what uh coin like nano uses but um uh hbar is trying to basically get into like the the smart contract space what what made me pretty skeptical um on the project for one was the it's like right now it's it's fairly centralized because it's it's a consortium of like a lot of big tech giants which i guess could be a good or bad thing depending on like what you're speculating on um and the other thing is the the emission schedule seemed pretty high uh, i believe each month what they're basically doing is dumping supply onto the market so they're trying to do that in a similar way, I guess, to like what Ripple does is like where they basically sell coins into the market, but they try to not do it uh, too aggressive to completely like dump the price down um, or uh, do it to a point that causes like a huge like run up in place. So I think they're basically trying to like regulate in a sense how how quickly the price can rise. So um, that made me personally pretty skeptical on HBAR. That's not to say it can't pump a lot because um, it is crypto. Like there is, um, especially in bull markets, like once the speculation kicks in, um, basically everything on Binance at that point is just going to be uh, pumping a lot. So, uh, but in terms of like the long term, I, I don't know. I, I'm just not too big on having like a, a consortium basically dump supply on the market and then basically because that that to me defeats like the whole the whole point of like a cryptocurrency. You're you're using basically humans to dump supply onto the market and then you want that to be um, like a global form of money that everybody uses later on. So, um, but that was good. yeah, I like it. appreciate that, man. Um, and, uh, dollar cost, any final, final thoughts from your end? Yeah. Um, I think Celsius will be the crypto's first central bank. Sweet. I'm, I'm serious about that. It's going to be really powerful. I mean, scarily powerful. It, the minute they absorb like stocks and equities and bonds, dude, the, yep. I, I, yeah, it, they have the right, the right people at the head of the ship, right? Mm -hmm. Alex uh, definitely knows what he's doing. He's not you know, uh, been around the block many, many a times. So um, it's good to see, you know, that they are people that also have ethics and that stick to that no matter, you know, how big they get, um, you know, uh, which is, I think a huge, super important thing. Um, maybe uh, one last question from uh, Juno Kotz. Uh, thoughts on Loop Ring Token, LRC. Um, uh, we talked about that a little bit the other day on the show, I think, uh, me and Litecoin, right? We were talking about it. Um, yeah. What was it? 
their uh, decentralized liquidity protocol or something like that. Yeah, with using ZK snarks or ZK rollups. Right. That, was, that seemed interesting. They just, I think they just launched. Um, let me see. I was looking. I was actually looking at it today. They just learned. They just launched their exchange. I think yesterday or the other day. So you're able to. Um, it's basically their version of, of Uniswap, except the fees are way lower. I'm gonna play around with it if if that's the case, dude. Yeah, if they can do the gas fee lower thing, like I, I love it. Like if they if that's successful, it's great. I I, I only knew about like zk rollups and everything and zk snarks from like Hex because there's an app coming out on Hex mm -hmm. where they're gonna roll a bunch of transactions at the end of the day. So it's like you're buying you you uh, you you kind of you set your stakes and then zero zero UTC time they'll um you'll, you'll get your stake will be implemented essentially right so if if it could be maybe a thing or maybe if you don't mind waiting the, the gas fee could just be so cheap that it's like it's pretty good i i have to check it out but i if if they pulled it off like they may have like cut the gas fee by like a hundredth of the price that'd be sweet that'd be, that'd yeah. be help a lot of things <laughs> I'm, I'm right after this podcast i mean I, I mean sorry right after this youtube i mean this live stream i'm gonna actually go check out the uh their uniswap so i let's I hope. Let's see. Let's yeah. See, what happens. See, how, see how it rolls. I mean, crypto is a little bit of a, you know, a game. We just have to, you know, roll with the punches, see what works. So um, we'll, we'll, uh, you know, uh, move it from there. We've been on uh, two and a half hours. So appreciate you guys coming on. For those of you guys who didn't catch the beginning of the stream, um, we are coming out uh, from Friday last week, obviously, or this week, whatever you want to call it, um, from Friday, September 11th until uh, Tuesday, um, September 15th at midnight US time. Um, we are opening, we still have Crypto Mindset Q4 2020 open, where we will look at both the fundamentals and technicals behind uh, various things in the crypto markets and help all of you guys uh, to maximize your crypto gains in Q4, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, um, we all have something to learn and move forward in the crypto game. It's changing every day, every week, every month, every quarter. So come in, it's the first one, uh, it's only 397. We're gonna take care of all you guys who get in on the ground floor. And um, yeah, we currently have about 40, uh, we have more than 40 people in the course. And um, yeah, we're gonna have a good old time, start webinars, um, every day for two weeks from Friday the 18th until October 2nd. And uh, yeah, last chance to get in on that um, at 397 is uh, this week on Tuesday the 15th at midnight. Um, and then next uh, quarter, we'll be increasing that price by $100. And um, yeah, things will be uh, totally different for Q1 2020. But anybody who gets in on Q4 2020 um, will be getting Q1 2021 uh webinars absolutely for free um and we uh will not continue that practice in my opinion probably for future quarters so um get in while the getting's good and um we'll take care of you guys there so um uh we will be next on stream for sure on uh tuesday morning or sorry yeah uh tuesday morning at 8 a.m eastern standard time uh, i may come on on monday morning at 8 a.m eastern standard time i'm still debating that that's you know, not too far off actually in my uh, term, but um, uh, yeah, we'll see how things go. But anyways, until next time, guys, uh, peace, live long and prosper and catch you all on the 